She knew me so much better. You're on a lifetime sentence. So now you never feel my presence. So you thought I would let this slip. Thought you knew me so much better. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome back. Uh, 
Oh, look at y'all in here talking about these being unattractive women trying to justify being overweight. It won't work. It won't work. Get in the gym. Lose the weight. You can talk all the noise you want to, but the scale don't lie. The dress size don't lie. And look at your left ring finger. It's barren as French toast. Come on. I hate him. He always talking about being fit and looking nice. Ooh. These men should just accept me at 210 pounds. Because there's more stuffing for the loving. Wrong. Left me alone. Pick it up. Come on. men love and thin high value men top 10% men don't have chubby lovers so all you guys are here telling these women what they want to hear let's look at your bank your bank account guarantee you it's sitting on show I'm tired of y'all getting them in talking this foolishness as if the world does not exist around your eyeballs Ladies, if you listen to a dude saying he wants you to be big, he wants to keep you stuck. Bye bye. Bye bye. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, yes, we are back. Shout out to my friends over at the Roommates Podcast. Just watched that one there first. I think it was his inaugural show. Uh, why are you single? Uh, you know, like it or not, folks, the party moves on. And when you do live streams, uh, it is unfiltered. It is, un- it is uncut. It is raw. So you got to be what you say you are when you live stream because there is no, there is no tightrope. There is no safety net. It is what it is. And make no mistake, uh, I didn't invent this format. Uh, you know, this has been around for a long time. Matter of fact, if we really want to talk about it, Tommy Sotomayor has been doing this for 12 years. So, uh, yeah, everybody has their own spin, their take. Shout out to my boy over at Big Facts Podcast. They're doing this something down there different in Alabama. The bottom line is this. <clears throat> you got to keep pushing the envelope. Keep moving it up. Blackmail media is going to happen. Oh, yeah, blackmail media is going to happen. Black men controlling their own voice and controlling their own image. And you guys can sit there and say, I was there when it happened. So here's what we're going to talk about tonight. Hold on. I'm looking for something. Just a second. Just a second. So what are we going to talk about tonight? Well, shout out to all the lovely patrons. Patrons make this channel possible. For those of you who didn't know, I've actually been on an official, unofficial vacation from my business over the last couple of weeks, but the show has continued to go on. And um, as I understand, you guys love the the call-in format. The calls are what you love, and I'm going to give you what you want, more calls. So here's the thing. The next part of the subject is we start to deconstruct this whole thing as effectively. (laughs) Some of the roommates kind of talked about it. Why are you single? Let's talk about it. 
Let's talk about it. You see the title. I'm a diva. I'm a queen. I'm a boss. Leveling up. Are these high value? Are these things high value? I'm sorry. I'm a queen. I'm a diva. I'm a boss. Leveling up. And then I'm a... I'm a PhD. Oh, we can't forget about that. We can't forget about that. I'm a PhD. What's that you say? I'm a PhD. That's the, that's the topic. That's the tippy tippy top. You know, you can be a queen or a diva or a boss. You can even talk about leveling up, but the top of the tip, tip, tippity tip top of it all is. I'm a PhD. Why? Because when a woman gets a PhD, especially a black woman, oh my gosh, that is basically, that is basically like cutting their ring finger off. Boom. Boom. And one of the things that I have noticed with women, with women across the board, um, is when they start giving themselves these extraordinary titles and understand something that's lame AF. See, if a dude calls himself, Hey man, my name is Cedric, but you can call me delicious. My name is Daryl, but everybody call me smooth. No, no, no. You call yourself. There, there is one thing that has been universally corny with guys, guys who make up their own nicknames. Come on. Somebody tell me I'm lying. Fellas, what do we think about about men who make up their own nicknames? You are lame AF. Nicknames only work if they're given to you by somebody else. I didn't come up with the name Godfather. That was in part due to Charles Faulkner, the Godfather of style and profile. I just shortened it to the Godfather. I didn't come up with the name Saint Kevin. That was Obsidian. Look, people call you what they feel like you are. Your friends do anyway. So I want you guys to think about it this way. How many times have you ever seen a woman call herself a diva? A, a, a diva who was under the age of 30. Consistently. What do we think? Divas are consistently 40 plus. 35 well, they are, they are, they are definitely past danger zone. They're in no man's land. Diva is just another word for washed up, old, old when it comes to old when it comes to marriage and relationship. And why is that important? Because I don't know many divas who are, are, are in long term relationships or married. Oh yeah. I don't know many divas who are in long-term relationships or married. And I'm talking about top 10% men. Top 10% men because, gentlemen, if no one's told you, let me be the first one to tell you. Modern women want men to be able to pay all the bills. Oh, they'll talk this good stuff about whatever, but when it comes right down to it, they want you. They want you to be able to pay all of the bills after they are pregnant. And if you and if you are foolish enough to believe a woman who says she does not want you to pay the bills, then reap the whirlwind, my friend. You can't complain when it falls in on your head. Can I get upset when it falls in on your head? Yes, that's even the divas. That's even the queens. And that's even these so-called boss women, but all these words are synonymous with women who are disagreeable, over the hill, single. Disagreeable, over the hill, and single. See, here's the thing. Let me deal with the queen, the title of queen first. But guys, we got to get my likes up. Are y'all kidding me? We got 2,100 people in here. Y'all hit the like. Okay, I, y'all got excited. I get it. Y'all said, ooh, the Godfather's on. We got we got Hafez of the roommates and the Godfather. Oh, my God. I, I know y'all got excited. I get it. Y'all forgot to hit the like button on the way in. I got it. Do me a favor. Go on back and hit that like button because you know if you don't get the engagement up over 50%, you know what happens. You start hearing some stuff like this. And so you don't want to hear that. You don't really want to hear that. You don't want to hear that, that intermission song. So you need to get that on up so I don't have to play the intermission song. Get my likes up. But see, here's the thing. 
when a man is a top 10% man or on his way, see, I, I, I find it funny. I saw people in, in the comment section, a lot of, a lot of broke men complaining. Kevin wants us to be tricks and this and that. Don't nobody care about your broke ass. I'm just going to get right down to it. You're broke. Shout out to brother how fast for keeping it real. You're broke. Ain't no such thing as a broke trick. You ain't got enough money to, for anybody to, 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 to worry about you tricking on them. So unless you're making six figures, I don't want to hear you talking about tricking. You ain't got no paper. I'm tired of y'all talking all this mess. Broke asses. And the only reason I'm, and I'm hitting the guys who talk this stuff. I'm not hitting the guys who don't talk stuff. I'm hitting the guys who talk this stuff. You, you $20 an hour crybabies worrying about somebody going to take, take you for a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Ain't nobody worried about your broke ass. Go watch that show because he did a very, very great breakdown of why women are single and why men are single. He said, number one, because you're broke. I don't talk about broke dudes over here. I don't talk that broke mess over here. So when it gets right down to it, competitive men don't worry about a lot of stuff you broke dudes can complain about. Another thing, why are you broke asses always around these self-improvement, self-improvement, become the best version of your sales channels? Ladies, have you ever wondered why so many broke ass dudes come around these places when they, when they complain about being 40 years old and wearing a suit? Have you ever wondered why so many dudes come over here talking about, oh, you're trying to get me in the... To, to sign up for slavery or marriage. And you, this channel is very well what it is. Why do they keep coming over here, folks? Like, why do they keep coming over here? Because this is where the women are. This is where the men of action are. This is where the, this is where the action is. And that's why, there's, that's why they are here. They can't go to their cl clubhouses and make it happen themselves. So they got to come over here. To where men of action have done something. And where the women have followed. So welcome. Sit your broke ass down. And shut up. Moderators. Anybody talking that broke talk. Time them out. Any man talking that broke talk. Time them out. No broke talk. Nobody told you to be broke. Next. Back to the ladies. See, why is that important? Because broke dudes and with dudes with a broke mindset make it possible for women to talk around and walk around talking this diva stuff, this queen stuff, this boss stuff, because they can look around and see, mm, well, he just went to high school. He just went to high school, but I, but I, but I, I'm a PhD. So by definition, he just went to high school and I'm a PhD. That means I'm a boss. I mean, after all, I got not only, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years of school. That makes me a boss compared to this high school graduate. And you let it happen. If you ain't got, getting out there competing, these women who are caught, run, running around calling themselves queens, queens. Well, thank you to the late great Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, you can be a queen, but a queen, <laughs> let me just go ahead and show you. I'll show you better than I can tell you. What'd he say? what did Patrice O'Neill give us, fellas? What'd he, what'd he tell you? Oh, you a queen? Uh-huh. Great. There you go. Right there. Remember that. Remember that right there. Remember that. I didn't do it. Patrice O'Neill did it. Patrice O'Neill. Oh, you're a queen? But I'm your king. Be a snatch. And that was a comedy bit. His comedy bit was, you just got to understand that the queen is the king's biznatch. That's what he said. And you may not like his delivery, but that's the truth. That's who the queen is. She's the king's woman. And he sends her out on a chessboard to do his bidding. She's the most powerful piece on the chessboard, bar none. You can lose your queen. What do you guys think the game of chess is? You can lose a queen and still win the game, but you cannot lose the king because you lose the king, you lose the kingdom. 
There's no such thing as a queendom. So when you hear women walk around talking this queen stuff, they're generally overweight. They're generally queen is synonymous with being overweight. Physically and unattractive. Rarely do you see pretty women walk around talking about I'm a queen. Just my observation. Your mileage may vary. But I don't really see many pretty, beautiful or gorgeous women walk around calling themselves queen. I generally see, you know, women who are a little on the rotund side. A little bit facially challenged. Call themselves queens. And then they run around and deal with little, you know, skinny, noodle back, beta males who are using their EBT card and they driving up their car. Queens uh, tend to deal with Jody on Baby Boy. We know about these. And then the bosses, the bosses are the women that we definitely know who the bosses are. The bosses are this I'm chick. I'm a PhD. That's this chick. And they, I'm a PhD. And I have never met a boss with a man that I would call alpha. I have never met a boss with a man who I would call that I thought that the man was dominating that relationship. It was always some liberal, um, new wave kind of, you know, we're partners and I respect her point of view. And she's probably pegging that dude. <laughs> I'm a PhD. You know, I've never met a boss with a strong dude ever ever i've never met a boss who wants to be married i'm a phd they always got some little puppy dog they stroke they always have some dude but the dude he, he she either has a dude or a toy yorkie that she keeps in a purse and they both are about the same level of strength that's right i'm calling i'm saying it yeah you 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 picked it. You picked her. I'm a PhD. You picked her left, right, up, down. That's my spot. Harder, faster. One, two, one, two. D don't move. Uh huh. Uh. She don't care about you. Think about when I asked that woman about marriage. <laughs> marriage? What? <laughs> marriage? What did she say? I would. I would never choose to be. I would never choose to be. I'm a. I'm a PhD. That's what she said about marriage, and she had a boyfriend. So call it. And then the next one, you know, we get the level up ones. The level ups, the level ups are invariably single mothers. And no disrespect to the women who are divorced. But sing, level ups are heavily populated with baby mamas. And these are the women who all of a sudden they start hearing all these messages and start thinking that they're looking in the mirror and start believing these messages that they're a queen, they're a boss, and they're beautiful, and think that they can go read a femininity book, watch a couple of level up videos, and then all of a sudden put on some makeup and, and a and a lace front and go out here and just hustle uh the Henry's. No, you getting hustled by that chick telling you what you want to hear. So think about it. The queens are generally overweight and facially challenged, the bosses are generally the PhDs and the masters and the ball breakers. The level ups generally are the baby mamas. You know, some single mothers and single mothers, I don't, baby mamas, single mothers and widows, I got no smoke for them. But then the other ones, the biggest, the ones that are a problem more than anywhere else, the ones that are more problem than any group, because at least the queens, they can be jolted into reality with a quick jab at that mirror. A quick whoop whoop. This, this, you know that vampires don't like to see their reflection, right? So if you really want to jack with a, a jack with a lot of queens, what you do is you carry you a little mirror or get you a mirror app, and when they start talking that stuff, you just pull out your pocket and show it, and they're like, the light, the light, the light. Now they don't want to look at themselves. The mirror shuts queens up real quick because they're like, dang, I can't even fit all my face in that mirror. I know. Mirror tends to shut queens up. Bosses, you know, they tend to know their places too. They tend to go around weaker dudes because when they get around men who can look them in the face and tell them to shut up, I don't care what your, I'm not your noodle back boyfriend. 
They they know how to settle themselves down. Bosses tend to have to check it a little bit more because they tend to work in structures to keep that stuff tamped down. They tend to be problems like in groups, like after hours, networking, that kind of stuff. You know, this is the this is the chick that tends to want to talk crap at work, try to get you in trouble at HR. But they 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 pick and choose their shots. You know, and Queens ain't over there. The bosses are in the white collar structure area. And then the level ups, the level ups, <laughs> they can only play so long. Daycare closed at 630. They got to go get them rug rats. They, they, they got too many kids and they don't have enough money to play in this ballpark. They can only pretend between the hours while daycare is open. After six and before bedtime, these chicks are nowhere to be found because what shuts them up? What shuts them up? Crying babies and loud ass kids in the background. They're not at happy hour. They're not at any functions. They're over there taking care of them badass kids, feeding the beanie weenies and that old funky macaroni and cheese. You know who these chicks are, these shake and bake broads. Why am I going off on these chicks? Because they all talk this stuff together. They all talk this stuff together and they talk like they're high value. These are the women talk about they want high value men and don't want to settle and all this. What do you mean I don't want to settle? You got three kids by six different dudes. You don't want to settle. What are you talking about? But why are they a problem? How'd they get to be this way? Glad you asked, Godfather. Glad you asked. Godfather, why'd they get to be this way? You know how they got to be this way? Because they got a ringleader. And the ringleader is who? The ringleader is the diva the diva the diva is the ringleader the diva diva is a word that was has been appropriated from old hollywood to talk about a woman who is a star over a long period of time it was taken from you know People like Dionne Warwick and uh, you, uh, Liza Minnelli, Barbara Streisand, um, you know, forget their politics, but they had star power for at least 30 years. You had to be 40s or 50s before you could be a diva. Beyonce is just now starting to get into diva status. They knew what this was. That's what a diva was. But this term, this word has been appropriated uh, by popular culture to make a group of women feel like they are on top of the world. Calling them divas, 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 divas. You talking about women who went to college and got a job. But just because they may not have had any kids or just because they may look better than a lot of their co-workers or counterparts because maybe they're still around 150 pound range you know while a lot of other women their weight just shot up you know a lot of a lot of these women's weight just shot up over you know 200 they still got their weight around 100 and 45 to 160, all of a sudden you got all these so-called divas. And what's diva synonymous with? Old. Older woman. That's what diva is synonymous with. You don't see any young divas. You don't see any woman calling herself 22, I'm a diva. I mean, they may say it while they're, you know, twirling on the dance floor, glittering and carrying on, but they don't really mean it. Diva is what you start to hear with a bunch of women who are past the wall, over the hill, powdered eggs, and done. Think I'm lying? Go over to Fox Soul and look at cocktails and queens. Ain't nothing but a bunch of divas over there. Diva was a word, and here's the funny part. Diva was a word that even they took from the drag queens. A lot of these women running around calling themselves divas took that word that was appropriated. They appropriated that word from the drag queens who took it from the Liza Minnelli's and the Barbara Streisand's and Elizabeth Taylor's 
and Joan Crawford's. Yeah, they took uh, RuPaul and them were the first divas. So think about it. When you see a lot of old women, older women calling themselves divas, they're talk, they're call, they're, 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 they're following after a bunch of transsexuals. Shout out to Minister Jap, the mate, the mate movement, men against transsexualized energy. You know, I didn't make it up, but that's what it is. So why is this a problem? Because I hear and have heard these women all call themselves high value women. Whoa. Now, just like some of the delusion of guys talk about, you could be a high value man as a teacher or Jesus was high value. Socrates was high value. Dude, if you got to reach back to Jesus and Socrates to make your argument, you've already lost. Sit over there and shut up. I've already talked about what I'm talking about when I speak about high value. And none of these women fit into a high value category. Why? Because they lack, in general, queens lack fitness. Bosses lack, bosses lack agreeableness and cooperativeness. The level ups got too many kids. Their wombs have been used. And the divas are too old. So none of these women are high value to high value men. Well, are you saying that all of these women, I know this woman over here this one time who found the exception does not disprove the rule. So for a woman to be high value, it's strictly related to what high value men want because i.e. he's the king and you may be a high value queen in this scenario but you're still the but you're still the king's wife that's all that's all the queen is is the king's wife and why does this tick some women off why does this tick some women off because some women despise the fact that they were born women these terms are all synonymous to strong independent i don't need no man uh masculine energy none of these terms that i've i've talked about are synonymous with feminine energy uh help meet uh loving spouse loving caring mother that's not synonymous with any of it and and that's the fact you try and women who have these titles want the strength associated with these things, but then they still want to go and look at their counterparts who are men, who a lot of who's, you know, these women look at the guys who are higher value. I'm like, well, I'm in the same environment with these high value men. I know them. These are the women who always deal with high value men, but they can never close the deal with a high value man. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Women don't like being women now. No, they don't. A lot of women don't like being women now because that means they have to accept the fact that nature made them different. Nature made you emotional. And even the best of them, I mean, women can't run the world. Women can't build the world. Women can at best try to maintain stuff. But when women are the freest they've ever been, what are the percentages of women who are going into STEM? The things that really matter. What, what percentage of the women are going into STEM? Into the sciences? Into the new technologies? That's not what women tend to do. Women tend to go into things where they can maintain. And that's fine. But you don't get paid the big bucks that way. If you want to go into customer service, you know, administrative, you know, secretarial, not secretarial, but things that are, how about this? Women are an expense to a business. Men tend to be revenue. Women tend to take jobs that don't make money. They cost money. They're valuable. But 
queens, bosses, divas, level up. They all want to be equals. Equality is major with these person, these kind of women. They don't necessarily call themselves feminist outright, but they are very much feminist minded, very much womanist. That's another, that's a softening word for feminism. So when guys like myself come along and say, high value man, this, or being that, hypergamy, this, 100% that, they hear the kind of things that they want from a man, but they, they wholeheartedly disagree or bristle with the fact that in order to get it, they have to be a different kind of woman. You have seen it countless times on my show. In the last three weeks, I've had several of these women. And the thing is, my question is, does being a diva, a boss, a queen, a level up, a leveled up, does that make you high value? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. We still don't have the likes up. We better get the likes up or the call lines will not be open. Uh, see, another thing is you'll find out that a lot of these women, these are a lot of these women are the same women telling me that the way I talk is wrong. You you need to speak more like this. So you, you're too harsh. You're this, you're that. Okay, ladies, tonight's your night to sound off. You get to get on. Now, understand something. If you get on my show, if you get on my show, let me tell you, let me talk to the sissies. I actually had somebody file a privacy complaint. They were on my show. I'm like, you do realize you're getting on the show with thousands of people, right? Can't file a privacy complaint because you made yourself look silly. I only ask one thing tonight, ladies. I don't care. If you have a different point of view, I want to hear from you, though. You will have time to speak. We can have a, a respectful conversation. I only ask a couple of things. So one, you don't try to talk over me. Two, that you're respectful. That's it. That's all I ever ask from any guest. Be respectful and don't try to talk over me. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. The call lines are open. We're going to get it. Oh, but before that, though, let me get, let me see. Let me read some of these super chats before we get the call lines open. First off, shout out to Ike. I am the king and will not be. I, 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 I am the I am the I am the king and king king and will not. I, 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 uh. Uh, Billy says women hold 67% of the student loan debt in the United States. That's true. And especially for you ladies who hold also be sailing up too. That's good. Hey man, if you hold a lot of student loan debt, let me, let's talk about it. If you hold a lot of student loan debt, you better be. All line open. Money work. The links in the description. Link is in the description. Un lugar para trabajar. Y si no hay para emigrar. Todo money, money, todo el dinero. Solo un par de gente se lleva el botín entero. Money, money, pasa verdadero. Si tienen la verde siempre llegará primero. Pero llegaremos antes o después. Solo a los suyos que Dios te lo ve. Que por más que tarde lo veré caer. Somos malos buenos y tenemos que el dinero. Ya lo veré. Lo vendo mi alma, lo lograré. Seré el más grande, no olvidaré. De donde vengo ni cómo voy. Money work. Make it rain on them, make it rain on them, make it rain in lights. Money work. 
cosas como son No quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón Porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves Sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés Ser un buen humano para mí es no, sí, El dinero ya lo veré No vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, me olvidaré De donde vengo ni como voy Money work. We already got somebody in here. Money work. You wave all privacy getting on my show. We wave all privacy. Yeah, yeah, the corazón. The corazón. Yeah, Come optional. <laughs> Sandals come optional. Sandals come optional. Make it rain in blanks. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to respect my chat room. You're going to respect my channel. Um, Here's where we're going to go. All the participants come into the fold. Welcome to the arena. I think people see that running a show like this takes a lot of work. So I appreciate everybody that's coming in here making it happen. Shout out to O'Shea. He came through here. All right. All right. Moderators, keep dropping the link. We're going to be going for a better part of an hour or so. I'm going to spend a little time with each person. Uh, 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 uh. Money world. All right. Oh, dude. You're, it says women, guy. I don't know why you're here. Uh, but you can go. Okay. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Hello. Hi, what's your first name? What do you got for me? Um, you know, Mr. Samuels, I don't disagree with you when it comes to uh, the king queen type of aspect thing. I think that especially as black women, a lot of times uh, we were groomed to do it on our own, right? And so because we were groomed to do it on our own, then sometimes we don't find out until much later in life that uh, that whole um, I'm mama, queen, boss type of chick doesn't work, you know? Okay. So um, I have to agree with you on some parts. Some parts I said, ouch, like, ooh, ooh, that hurt a little bit. But, but yeah, such, such as? Um, when you said that the, the divas are too old, but, you know, okay, so. How, I mean, uh, no, I, no offense, but how old are you? I'm 43. But okay, I don't so so myself. hold on. So we're around this. We're, we're Generation X. Mm -hmm. When they said diva, when we were coming up, weren't they talking about the Gladys Knights and the Dionne Warwicks? And the, okay, yeah, were those women young? No, they weren't. So <laughs> I just, I think black women just have a problem with reality. That that I I agree in some parts. I agree. I feel like we have the, and I call it a syndrome. I call it the strong black woman syndrome. And sometimes it takes until you're 40 or 35 or outside of that age, okay. especially when you grew up in a single parent uh, home. What part of the country are you in? I am on the West Coast, but I'm originally from the Midwest. Okay. So, 
we're around the same age. I heard a lot of the same things, but I got to push back. I remember having these conversations with black women in college. So I don't think that black women have not heard this stuff. Matter of fact, I know you've heard it. Black men have been screaming it since Shaharazad Ali. Very true. Um, but the louder influence was the mom. Okay. But you, you know weren't but saying? you weren't sleeping with your mama. You are very correct. <laughs> so so my my thing is this. Your mother could be a loud influence, but the men you want, black men have been asking consistently for women who are fit, feminine, and friendly for the better part of 40 years. And what I think is time ran out and now you're desperate. Because I don't see white women talking about Stella getting their groove back. <laughs> I don't see Asian women and Hispanic women. I mean, I, well, that's why I'm saying I don't. I, I this the feminist message was pushed across the board, but but I mm -hmm. I don't understand. Black women keep saying blaming everybody else, and I think you got to blame yourselves. I don't. I do not disagree with that. I don't disagree with it. Um, what I'm saying is, I don't disagree with you on a lot of points. I'm, I'm okay. going to say that. I don't disagree with you. On okay, a lot well, of what points. do you disagree with me on? So, Because I want to give the you a chance thing. to get, say what you have to I, say. Go ahead. I really don't disagree with you on much. Okay. Uh, actually, well, I feel like, well, let, let me do, I just let don't me, want it. To let me do this, way. though. Let me get to some of the women, other women on the panel who do have maybe a little disagreement. I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute real quick. Uh, iPhone. I don't know what your name is, lady, but you're but you're driving. You need to unmute yourself. Hello. Hi. What's your name? All right. Uh, what did I get wrong? So I hate that you're looking for someone to disagree because I completely agree. <laughs> and I'm actually fit, friendly, and feminine. All right. Um, the only thing is I'm in the danger zone, unfortunately. I'm 28. Uh -huh. And I'm single and I haven't met anybody yet. But I heard your comment on the STEM jobs. And I do have a job in IT and programming. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get... Because it sounds like you're trying to basically ask me, how do I find a man? Well, I just think that you should give tips on for people in the danger zone. So maybe you, I mean, I, know I do, I do, I do. It's called one on one advice. It's called one well, even on YouTube. No, no, you do no, no, say, no, you know, no, 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 no. I need you to event. listen to what I'm going to tell you. Anything that's valuable, you should charge for it. That's true. So, um, a lot of black women want someone to play matchmaker and fix it up. And that's fine, but it's going to cost you. I mean, that and that's, that's totally understandable. And I heard your um, conversation on some of the other panels on YouTube and you talked a lot about kind of the media influences. So like, you know, the black families, what about the media influences women, though? What about the media influences? For example, for example, you use the songs with the I N D M P. I don't need a a, mm -hmm. a man, single ladies, and you're right. That's kind of being thrown in our face, and it's our parents' job to kind of make up for that. And how old, how, like how old are you? Have, I'm 28. All right, uh, over 18, you're responsible for yourself. That's right. So let me let me hold have, hold you let me hold you back for a second. Let me get to some other people. I want to see what they have to say. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, see, non-black women are perfectly fine with paying for what they want. They'll they'll go pay to talk to a, a a a personal trainer or a matchmaker or whatever. Black women don't. I don't think black women want to pay to have to find a black man. You think they should be free, Maria? 
Maria, you can unmute yourself. I can. Why did you turn off your camera? Okay, I'm mute. Okay, I'm gonna mute you back, and I'm gonna go to the next person. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jessica. Hello. Yeah, where's your camera? All right. So what I would do is while you're getting ready, I'm going to let Stacy come back in while y'all are getting ready. Go ahead, Stacy. Okay, so here's the thing. Let me let me let me let me let me let me level this out for you. Okay. You got a STEM okay. job, right? Yes, I do. All right. What's the longest relationship you've ever had? A year. How long ago was that? Uh, it was like in college. So how long ago was that? Um, like seven, six years ago. All right. Did you go to a major university? I did, the University of Alabama. Mm-hmm. Go Bama. Yep. Ro Roll tide, I guess. Right. So uh, if I went to a major university, I know I saw plenty of... See, what I'm hearing from you is you know, you heard, but you only had a relationship for six years. Why? <laughs> oh, no. Um, well, like you've mentioned before, I have been heavily involved in trying to move up in my career. And, you know, I really feel like I just haven't found that right one that I'm like attracted to. And then when I do find the very attractive ones, I feel like they're just kind of not interested sometimes, which is fine. Okay. But all right. I just I really uh, haven't uh, found uh, anybody. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So again, who broke up your, who ended the relationship in college? Was it you or him? It was him. So. Here's one thing I don't accept from women. I've been moving up in my career. I'm sorry. Everyone moves up in their career. And now black women seem to be able to get married and have children just fine. Why can't you? Why can't black women like yourself? <laughs> and you say, right. and you say, I, and you I say, totally... and you say you can't find the right kind of man, more or less. Yeah, I kind of unfortunately have a a looks kind of requirement that I'm looking for. I don't want to be rated, but I'm just saying that I like them like you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Shout out to my dog, Ayo Canseco, Big Facts Podcast in the house. That's my dog. Yeah, your godfather even. Yes, that's my boy. I watch his content. That dude has a good show, man. He got a good show and a good message. And a lot of you nothing ass batches. <laughs> not not you, Stacy. But man, the brother has good content. I'm gonna put a link, his link down in the description. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. All right. Now let's be serious, Stacy. Let's be serious. What I'm hearing you basically is like you sound like you talk like a man. I got a particular look, and I got a particular that. He needs him. He okay. Do you want to be married? I do. You want to, you want to have any children? Yes. Why the hesitation? Because I used to want to have like three kids, but now I'm okay with like one. Uh, no, don't do that to it. First off, don't. Why did you? Th why did you go from three to one? Um, just like you you mentioned the time, and I'm 28 now, and I mean three would be a little hectic. I'm just a little bit more mature. Do you want to work to pay then, significant think, bills after you're pregnant? I do not. So you want to be a stay-at-home wife? You want to be everything that I talk about? Pretty much, but uh, I could but, do a work. Uh, but I could. No, own no, 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 no. You you want to <laughs> not have to work to pay significant bills. You want your kids to be able to go to University of Alabama if they want to. Let's knock this bull crap off. You reduce the amount of kids because you're older now, but you still want the same things. And I don't judge you for that. My thing is why. All of a sudden, is this starting to Danger zone. make sense now? When you went to college with Becky and Myling and Marisol, and they were sorority girls going to school and engineering and getting married and having kids out of college. I went to OU, University of Oklahoma. I saw this. I don't, it's, it's not as though black women don't do that. 
Right. And unfortunately on campus, I did not run into the right one. I was in a relationship. You were in a relationship for one year. Yes. One, one of those years I was, and then I dated and it just didn't go anywhere. I've got plenty of options okay. at my door. They're just not. You, you have plenty of options at your door right now? I do. All right. And let me guess. Um, how tall are you? Five, five. Right. And he needs to be how tall? Um, Like at least five, ten or five, nine. I'm not good with the math, but. You're, the a, you're a STEM person, but. So he so okay. I just meant like five ten would be great. Five ten. So you're not a he had so he doesn't have to be six feet. Okay. Now yes, but minimum five ten. Right. I mean, Unless, that's me so kinda... again, this will work better if you just go ahead and tell me the truth because I I'm hearing all kind of deception. You're another one of these six feet chicks. You're telling me you're lowering. See what you're doing is you're you're sitting here trying to maneuver and lower the standard but the truth is you still want a guy who's six feet tall and he needs to make how much money i would like him to make at least one hundred thousand dollars a year i mean well, actually, I'm, like what, twenty thousand uh, and what percentage and what percentage of they take out taxes. What, <clears throat> what percentage of men make over the hundred twenty thousand dollars in this country According to your podcast, it's not maybe ten percent. It's not according to my podcast. It's the truth, right? So, again, ma'am, you're exactly what I say. You have not you your mindset was not a bone relationship. You were out here living up your Alabama STEM life having hot girl summer, running up your numbers, wasting your time. And now you're, you're almost 30 and now you're having to make deals with the devil and, uh, and the man that you get, you're not going to be happy with because you want him to be six feet tall and earn over six figures. And that's fine, man. That is fine. But what the question is, are you what those men want? Honestly, I do believe I am. I'm fit, fit. Eminently about the community. I cook. I the, clean. Okay. When was the, when was the, so tell me about your fiance. Okay, Kevin, I don't have a fiance. That's right my now. point, ma'am. See, that's see, here's the thing. Remember I did a broadcast and saying you can believe your value of a car is one thing, right? I did a video talking about high value. And you're a smart woman. You can I did I said you can have a car. And you can have taken great care of that car. You know, you know every mile you put on that car. But when you set it on the corner, there is an upper limit and a lower limit of how much that car is worth. It's called a value. And who determines value? Is it the, the buyer? The seller. I mean, the, not the that's right, the market, the buyers, not the seller. So if you don't, if you feel like, if you feel that you are what they want, then why aren't they trying to buy you? That's, I just, I really haven't put myself out there in those, the right spaces. And what city do you live in? I live in Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. That could be a problem, but that could be a problem. Yeah. So take it that way. Let's assume you are. Birmingham is not an affluent city. What percentage of what percentage of Birmingham residents make over six figures? See, I'm not sure. See, and this is what I'm trying to show that you want men to come to you. You got to go to where the men that you want are. And then you got to compete. You're not competitive. See, you knew you wanted to go. Why didn't you go to uh, Jackson State or Florida A&M? Why didn't you go to an HBCU that had the degree path that you went to University of Alabama for? I guess I just. Let's, let's knock it off. Accreditation. Like accreditation and. Accreditation. Because that's what it was. The value. One degree is hot, more valuable than the other. So you carried your butt over to a PWI because the HBCU 
while you could get the same degree, it wasn't going to be as valuable. You knew you had to, and you had to compete to get into University of Alabama, and the standards to get into probably a, a parallel HBCU would not have been as nearly as tough. See, y'all know how to do this. It, a lot of black women, honestly, when it comes to finding a black man, you're simply lazy. And that's fine. White women will get them. Go ahead. White, <laughs> no, white women will get no. them. You guys continue to go ahead and be lazy. White women, Hispanic women, and Asian women will continue to snap up all the high-value black men. And you guys continue to say they don't exist, they're gay, or they're marrying out because they can't find y'all because you're not there. I agree with you, but do they put in as much work as oh, well? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, see, see? Say it again. Say it again. Oh, say it again. <laughs> say it again. No, I mean. Do they do put they in really as much work as what? As what? As, I mean, as African-American women. What do you mean? Do they put like, in as much work? No, 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 no. It's, do the black men, high value black men put in as much work doing what? No, not men, the, the Asian women, the white women that yes, you speak Yes, they put in more work. Yes, okay, listen, ma'am, listen, ma'am, they put in more work. What do you hear from black men who typically date out? And they say, I like black women, but what do they say typically? If you're being honest. It's just, okay, from what I can think of, they say things like, you know, I hear the words ghetto and ratchet a lot and things like that. And I think that that is just. Hold up. Stop. We're talking about the men on the caliber you talking about you want. What do they say? And you saying they say ghetto and ratchet. For African-American women. I, Hold I do on. Feel like Hold on. I need you to stop and breathe. Because what you're about to do is invalidate what they're saying versus saying, is it valid? They're the market. The end consumer of a product that is a woman is a man. You put the car out. If the car was what he wanted, he would buy because he bought another car. What you're basically trying to say is there's something wrong with the buyer instead of the product. Okay, but if it's rumored that um, like Hondas always break down on you, they're going to be less likely. To then whose responsibility? Oh, oh no, then I need you to listen. Then it's then whose responsibility is it to make sure that Honda has a better reputation? It's Honda. Exactly, black woman. <laughs> okay, I hear you. I mean, Dr. Tia San Johnson, who teaches black masculinity studies at the University of California. Santa Barbara. It's black masculine studies. And I was shocked when he said some of the major enrollees in his class are white women. And when he asked these women, why are you here? And with some of the responses he used to get back, I like black men. I like black men. I want to learn more about the culture so I can be a better fit. What effort or work have you individually done to try to separate yourself from a competitive pack of women to find the kind of black man you say you want? Well, I know for me, I have those great skills like cooking and I keep everything neat and clean. What have you I done to out. separate just that's if he finds you? I ask you, what have you done to separate yourself from the pack? And you said it yourself. You're living in Birmingham with your light hind or a bushel. And I said on another program, only a fool hides value. The net net of it is you've done nothing. Yeah, I agree with you there. Then I do whose fault is it? I, I do agree that it is my fault that I haven't met the high value man that I seek. There you go. And see, the, and the conversation has traditionally been that these black men don't exist. They exist. It's just the black women like yourself are not prioritizing finding them. And you ask the question, are these other women putting in the effort? They are apparently so because they're getting them. And see, the way you're about to frame it is, uh, they're just picking them because they're not black women. No, that's not how this works. See, I got news for a lot of you sisters. Black men don't have near the disrespect or disdain for you guys as you have for us. Mm 
Look at your. Oh, you don't think so? You don't, no, oh, no, 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 I, no. I saw somebody in the in the comments. Listen, outside of rap, where rap was talking about bees ain't shit, but O's and you don't see men. You don't men don't make songs of scrubs and I'm independent and I don't need no man. Black women have made it real clear that you don't prioritize black men. We are here to for what? To lift heavy objects and to fall on top of you every now and then. The last relationship you had with a black man was six years ago. That was by my man, 28. Uh, that was 25% of your life ago. That's how little of importance we are to you. You put more emphasis in a, in a working for a white man's company than you have for, than being a black man's mate. And, and that's why I agree with you. I think it's important to prioritize getting out there and meeting someone mm. So I totally agree with that. But what at what age do you need to start doing that, though? I think 22, 23 is a fine time because you need to fine tune. You should have been married by that time. Learn. And Kevin, that's what I wanted to ask you. You should have been married by that time. Married, but high value starts at 30, correct? Yeah, that's for us. So that's, you... that's not to, see, what do you think? You get to, okay. So what do you think? You can have a man in his 20s who's making the kind of money to have a stay-at-home wife? You do live here. Men don't make that kind of money until they're 35 plus. Again, you're the one with the standards in the top 10%. So you got to go where the top 10% of men are. And that's what they are. But again, you're still talking as though men got to do something and change something. You're not talking like I got to compete and got to get out here and hustle to find a man. A lot of sisters really just don't think they should have to do anything to find a black man. No, I totally agree with you. All right, you. but I got other people um, to come on. I appreciate it. Maria, I mean, I gave you like 20 minutes, ma'am. You you got a job. Book a session. I've been ready. Hey, how are you? I'm pretty well. How are you? Good. You heard all that back and forth. What did you disagree with? Um, It's hard to say because I believe that um, society and a lot of stigma has been pushed on a lot of women about how they should be. And um, especially like depends how you grow up as well. I believe that, you know, some women don't grow up thinking, oh, I should have a husband by the time I graduate high school or going to college. Like, you know, sometimes it's not their fault. How old are you? Like, I do get what I need you're to, saying. Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Could you hear me? I could hear you. It's a little low, but I could hear you. Oh, I'm, I'm, my volume is loud as can be. I said, how old are you? Maybe it's me. Hold on. Yeah. Let me turn it up. Uh, All right. How old are you? I am 30. 30. Um, yes. So first off, you started and said society pushes a lot of this on women. And not all of it, but I would say majority of it. If you, I mean, from what I, from what I see, a lot of media is pushed to make women believe that they can do anything alone. Um, so why is it? Okay. You're a black woman. I'm mixed. Yeah. Who, which, which one of your parents black? Uh, my mom's side. Yeah. Okay. So, um, then why is the marital rate in other other communities twice as high as, as in the black community? Opportunity? Better no, 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 no. If the media is pushing these messages, is it the media or is it black media? I mean, from what you see in hip hop and rap culture, mm -hmm. which is predominantly black people. Ma'am, let's be do, being due respect, ma'am. Hip hop does not drive relationships. No, I'm not talking about it drives but relationships. I need you to understand. I need you to understand. I need you to understand something. If you want to talk media, this is going to be a losing battle for black women because black women control black media. Oprah Winfrey, okay. the OWN Network, Ebony Essence. But young girls okay, are not really Okay, paying. okay, you cannot oh, over talk me. Okay, sorry. Black media, if black women, black. Waiting to exhale. Stella got her groove back. These are these are women. Black men don't make these movies. See, hip hop is the only thing. Only is a very very tiny piece of a media mix, and it's the only thing you can point to. 
And hip hop is a response to the environment. It doesn't drive it. Mm -hmm. Hip hop just responds to. Yeah. Well, from my point of view, growing up a lot of, you know, I don't, I didn't look up at Oprah as a, as a teenager, as a young woman, like those weren't women that. What part of the country are you from? Puerto Rican and, and both, but over in Florida. Right. Back in Florida. But if you but if you grew up okay, so culturally, did you grow up with more of a Hispanic culture or more of a black culture? A uh, mixed. Okay, well so, then well then uh, I'm sorry, well then family and stuff was are you trying to say that family and husband and wife and that stuff was not pushed in your Hispanic culture? Not really. Uh, my mom was more of like, you know, educate yourself. Go that, to was school. that your mother or was that the culture? I would say my mom. Exactly. So you see what you're doing is you're you're mixing things. And I'm very specific. Hispanic culture is very traditional. Correct. Yeah. So don't come at me telling me that it does not when I can tell you it does. Sounds as though. Here's the thing, ma'am. You're a grown damn woman. I don't care who pushed what. Do you want to be married? Of course. What's the longest relationship you've ever had? Um, over a year now. Are you involved in it now? Um, talking to the person that I was with, but I'm. What is the longest relationship you've ever had? I just, I don't what know, is I the longest relationship it. you've had? The longest, uh, five years. That's what the first question I asked. How long ago was that? That was when I was eighteen. Eighteen to twenty-three, and why did you not marry him? Um, it was a bad boy wasn't good for me was doing a lot of things breaking the law just realized too too late that it was wrong for me whoa 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 whoa. excuse me you were Uh 18 years old correct and you understood that he was a criminal at the moment no ma'am no ma'am don't give me that at the moment bullshit yeah you knew he was a criminal breaking the law I mean, at the doing you knew he was a criminal. If you want to have an honest conversation, man, we're gonna have an honest conversation. But if you want to try to, I am. I'm well, then you know I, I just need to understand. If you was, understood he was a criminal and breaking the law, yeah, then then own it. And then you gave him five more years of access to your womb and your body. Mm-hmm. That's on you. You could. I and agree. how many? And how many non law breaking suitable men wanted to date you in that five year time frame? When you were with Thugnificent. I know a lot. I mean, get off my phone. It was, I know it's my fault. Exactly. I'm get off, get off my not. phone. You, you crazy. The society and everything else. I mean, again, Got on the phone talking about, well, society has done this to women and the media has put it. But then you get right down to it. What have I said? Had plenty of suitable men in your youth, but you wanted to be thugged out with a lawbreaker who was the worst part of the culture. And, and understand, she had two cultures to pick from. Why didn't she go down to the traditional culture? Because she wanted to run fast and free and do what the French toast she wanted to. Well, good for you. Karen, you need to get back in the camera. I can't see you. I got everybody else. Ariel, you're next. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, we reset. All right. <laughs> what did I get wrong? Or what, what, what? Go for it. Um. So I agree with some of the things that you said, but... um. As far as the whole boss mentality and everything, I feel like you kind of grouped everyone together. And <laughs> I feel like, you know, some of us have been brought up differently and we have to be strong and, you know, just carry Wait ourselves. Wait a minute. Different. You say I brought the, the boss, I grouped everybody together. Have you been watching from the beginning? Yeah. I felt like you put the divas and the bosses together. Uh, in the kind di- of category. No, let me, let me, let me go ahead and refresh your memory. The queens okay. are the queens are overweight and tend to be facially challenged. The bosses 
tend to be much more ball breakers than I'm a PhD. I'm a PhD. I'm a PhD. The level up chicks are the baby mamas. And the divas are the old chicks. Those are four distinctly different categories. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. So I don't say how you say I mixed them. I don't know. I feel like when you did say it, it kind of felt like they all were like the uglier women. They um they're just not feminine at all, which I do agree. I do agree. You know, as far as bosses, we do need to be more feminine and stuff like that. Okay, as far as bosses, we need to do what? We need to be more feminine. Okay, uh, are you a boss? Yeah. Oh, uh, where'd you go to college? I went to Georgia State. Georgia State. How old are you? I'm 32. 32. What do you do for a living? So I went to school for health administration, but I am a beauty instructor and a pro celeb makeup artist. You're a beauty instructor? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. I teach women how to, you know, glam, do their own businesses, um, other makeup artists, the beauty industry. Um, I sell online courses okay. and I have my own cosmetics line. All right. And so what makes you a boss? Say again, I'm sorry. What makes you a boss? Oh, I mean, I work for myself. Okay. Um, that makes you a business owner. How many employees yeah. do you have? Um, Just me, then, I guess. Then by definition, you are not a boss. What would you call it? Just an entrepreneur? I would call you a solopreneur. I would call you no, I would call, see a, a black man who owns his own business doesn't walk around giving himself inflated titles. Okay. You went to Georgia state and you, you sound like you're doing okay. You sound like you're doing, I don't know how well you're doing. How long you been in business for yourself? Um, I've been in business for 10 years. Okay. And, uh, and, and 10 years. Okay. Um, has the business grown year over year? Yeah. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, and has it always been based here? Um, Yeah, here in Atlanta. All right. Uh, so projections for the next five years. What kind of growth projection do you have for the next five years? Um, I plan to just more so remove myself and focus more on online business. Okay. So and, but what I are the growth projections? You mean like money? Or the KPIs? <laughs> who are your major com <laughs> who are your major competitors? Oh, well, you know, other beauty brands like Colored Rain. Okay. I'm going to name a whole bunch of brands. But you do what? Yeah. You do what? I, I want to pretty much bring everything to online services. All right. Okay. So in the next five years, you just want to transition more to online. Mm-hmm. Like remove myself out of it. Great. And But will you have any employees? Yeah. No, no. Direct employees. Not contractors i mean direct employees where you're actually carrying the insurance for them not farming it out yeah, to fiber and all that other kind of stuff oh no 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 i want to have my own building here in atlanta all right and i want to have them work under me your own building you mean buy your own mm -hmm. building or lease it mm -hmm. uh, no i want to buy it. oh okay so you must be doing really well yeah, I do pretty good. Um, I work with a couple people, um, Toya Wright, Monica. Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of money in beauty, but yeah. But my thing is that 10 years, I'm just asking if if mm -hmm. you don't have any employees, I mean, if you, let's just say you were a plumber for 10 years. Okay. Um, can you really call yourself a boss if you still, you maybe increased your standard of living. You may have gone from, mm -hmm. You may be able to be a master plumber. You may be doing high-end jobs, but are you really a boss? 
Okay, I get I get where you're going. With but that. that's what bosses yeah. always been, man. But black women like to glamorize themselves with overinflated titles. And I and I really try not to go there, but it don't sound boss like. Sounds like you got a job and you got a nice business and you may be making good money and all that. And I'm not trying to diminish that, but mm-hmm. you're lying, call. I mean, not lying, but when you walk around calling yourself a boss and we got to do this and we got to do that. I mean, if I was a man, if a man were to do that, y'all would call him a liar. Would you not? I mean, yeah, it's not the typical definition. Then it's a, can you be lying? Mm-hmm. What do you mean not the typical definition? There's only one definition. A boss implies underlings. Mm-hmm. You have none. So please. Okay. But the thing is, and the reason this is problematic is because when you start c- carrying yourselves in these exalted titles, you start thinking your value is higher than it is. And then when you are asked questions about that value, it doesn't line up. I mean, I would assume you, you're not married and you want to be married one day. Yeah. So are you, you would want to marry another boss. Yeah, I um, I actually don't want to like stay at home. I want to, but it doesn't matter. But you still want to marry another boss, but you're not mm-hmm. a boss. That's my point. You okay. ladies overinflate your value and then get out on the open market and are dis- disappointed because you're how old? Thirty what? Thirty two. Thirty two. Uh, and your long relationship? How long was that? Um, it was two years ago, four and a half years. And you guys didn't get married for some reason. Was he a boss? Yeah. He was? He owned his own business? Well, okay. <laughs> no, he was an entrepreneur. An uh, entrepreneur. So that means, uh, that means, bu- that means nothing. That's bullshit. That's another bullshit word. What did he do? What was his title? Um, he drove his own trucks and he also, um, he's a YouTuber a pretty big YouTuber. All right. Entrepreneur is another buzzword that was caught on. But what I'm ultimately trying to get to, ma'am, is calling yourself a boss is setting setting a lot of women up for failure. Just say, I run my own business. But calling yourself a boss implies a lot of stuff that it ain't. And if a man did it, he'd be called all kind of stuff. I'm going to just leave it there, though. Um, thanks for calling in. Thanks, Kevin. All right. See, Guys, why is this important? Because when you start calling yourself all these things, you know, men, see, men get get a reality check in the world. You can't call yourself something that you're not and the world is going to let you go on. But women can do it because nobody wants to say anything. All right, uh, Karen, I cannot see you. You're backlit. No. If you're not going to get in a light, you can't be, you can't be here. So you can sit there and be in the dark. Um, do, 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 do. Go ahead and unlight yourself. Yeah. Jade, uh, you've been sitting there making all these faces. Oh, yes. I'm making faces. Because mm-hmm. I understand. I understand. I get it. You do? Hey, Karen, well, if you're going to troll, you need to at least step into the light. <laughs> if you're going to troll, you can at least troll effectively. Yeah, yeah, you can nod your head, but that's not going to work. <laughs> B- bring your big ass into the camera. Oh, no, Kevin. <laughs> you can see that big ass right there. You can be that big ass head. Come on. If you want to troll, step up, chick. Troll me. I need better trolls. <laughs> and see, this is what, and honestly... This is the response you would get instead of saying, you know what? I don't necessarily like the brother's delivery, but he's taking time to talk to black woman after black woman after black woman and, and just kind of try to level set. Nope, I get this shit. I get this shit. Because this is what we would rather do. We'd rather do this because it's just like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Shut up. Shut up, you old fag, you old sissy, <laughs> you old lame, you old dude, you old punk. Uh, look at your suit. Look at this. I saw a video about that. I saw your shoe, your hat. 
And the other people sit back and say, God dang. Well, you know, Kevin, I think a lot of times uh, they were, people were groomed this way. They didn't, it's hard for women, and I'm going to say this from experience, it's hard for women to take advice from a straightforward, strong black man. Right. You know, and then they and, and then they get upset and called. But then if you don't, you become dusty in a noodle bag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not and that's why I'm here, because it's not true. Mm-hmm. You know, we come to a point where we say, OK, you know, let let me look in the mirror mm-hmm. and let me find out what the common factor is, the common denominator of my situations. And generally it's us. Well, I appreciate you, know? you at least calling in to be honest, sis. I mean, and that's, that I do, I like to do these because I do get more women that are at least trying to be honest. And, and that is more, you know, more beneficial. But I do need to cycle through the rest of these, though. I did want to give you a chance to uh, say your final piece. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Do, 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 do. So... Mr. Big Stuff, come on. You want to troll, Karen? Come on. Get into the light, Karen. Come on, Karen. Come on, Karen. First name. Uh Uh-huh. Last name. What do you want? But you don't want to get on the camera. What you're breaking up, though. Okay, so your your audio and your video is uh, jacked up. So you can add to the conversation, but go ahead. I, I'm gonna drop Karen. Karen, I gotta drop you back down because the the audio. I'm gonna drop you back down. And you can come back in. I don't know what's going on with the audio connection. Um, uh, do do do. Sherland. Uh. Hello, Jess. How are you? Hello, Jess. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm okay. All right. So, what do I have? Can you hear me? Uh-huh. I gotta drop you back. Okay, you're gonna have to mute your. Okay. I'm gonna mute you. You need to shut off the YouTube channel in the background. Shut, close all the other windows, and all you need to have open is Zoom. All right. I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I mute yourself? I mute you. There we go. Okay. All right. So, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. So, how old are you? I'm thirty. All right. So, what did I get wrong? Nothing. I actually agree with you. Um, I have never ran into those issues. I've always been feminine growing up. Um, I'm currently in a relationship right now. Okay. And um, one thing I noticed that's different about me and my other female friends is that I've always dated kind of like the nerdy guys or the guys who- You're in a relationship have... right now? Yes, currently. Are you guys planning on getting married? Yes, that's the plan. We've How been long have you been together? Five months. Five months. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. I'm trying to get, I'm trying, congratulations, but I'm trying to get to the people Mm -hmm. who actually have a disagreement or so. uh, Oh, okay. But thank you for calling in. I do appreciate it. Shout out to Jess, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Let's get on to Charlene. Charlotte, well, go ahead. Help. You need to unmute yourself. Hello. How are you?
Well, well, how long? How, hold on, hold on. How long you been married? Well, I mean, and and how old are you, roughly? Then you lived. You live in our community. I mean, some some of it was engineered, but a lot of it has, you know, people's choices. I mean, when you when you sitting here talking, I mean, what other when you have women who say openly say, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You asked my question. You have a okay. Black men aren't openly out talking about we don't need a woman. We don't want this. You're scrubs. You're this. You're that. I mean, there's a lot of acrimony between black men and black women. But what do you hear more often than anything else on my channel? Have you watched my show? Any first of all, I think okay, I think I need, women are being dishonest. Uh, have you? How long have you watched my? Women are being have you watched my show? I've, I've just started watching you for two weeks now. All right. Uh, well, I'm busy. You know, I'm working. Okay, you can't talk over me. So that's not going to work. So maybe you can't hear the audios off. Um, you know, I'll, I'll answer the call. Look, a lot of black women tend to wonder why there's so much acrimony. Here's why there's a lot of acrimony. Stop fighting. Stop fighting your men and stop talking about you don't need a man. You want, you want, you want acrimony to drop. Then somebody is going to have to go first. And far too many women are waiting for Black men to go first, and I'll just be honest, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> black men are not going to go, they're not going to lay down their arms in this thing. What they're going to do is they're going to do what men have always done. They're going to continue to work, build, and progress and move forward. And then when either one, and when those men decide, if they decide they want a wife, children, anything, they're going to look around and they're going to select the best woman from the women that are available. And I hope they're black women in that selection, but it's up to black women to be there when he decides he's looking for a wife. He who findeth a wife, find a good thing. That means you need to be a wife first. So stop trying to be right. Stop thinking that somebody owes you something. Get your daddy issues together. Make peace with your dad. Make peace with the media. Make peace with everything. Because at the end of the day, no one, the world does not owe you understanding. And while a lot of sisters are saying, well, a man should do this. A man should do that. You're saying it with an empty ring finger, no prospects. It ain't about being right. Knock off the shame, guilt, insults, and the need to be right. And say one thing. I need a man. I need one. I don't want one. I need one. I need a man for these reasons. And make peace with the fact that you do need men. A lot of these women talk about you don't need men. You're saying the women who say that I laugh at you. I'm like mankind has civilized the world in general and made it so comfortable enough to where you honestly think you don't need a man. Yet, if there's something that you have and a man wants, you cannot stop him. You can't. You work at a you work in an organization that was put together, built and run by men on roads that men built in a house constructed by men with plumbing by men. You go to the grocery store and the companies, men run the world. So stop talking about you don't need it because if you had to give back everything that's man-made or man contributed, you would have nothing because women don't build, they nest. And so many Women, since the caller ass, black women in particular, are at odds with their very female nature. They don't like it. A lot of women feel like being a woman makes you weak. And I don't want to be weak because that means I'm going to be taken over and I'm going to be done. And that's what the therapy comes in. You're at odds with your feminine nature and you are the weaker vessel. And you need to go sort that out with a therapist. And then when you get your head together, there are sure there'll be plenty of men out here who would love to date you. But the guy you want probably would have gone on down the path. All right. So we're going to do. Uh, Stacy. I've already had you here, Stacy. But I will let you say your final say your final piece. Let me get Stacy in here. Stacy, go ahead. 28, right? Birmingham. 
All right, sis. Here's the thing. You got. Let uh, I me mean, make sure we're on the same page. I know a lot of this stuff is hard to hear. Because unfortunately, we have far more men like Steve Harvey, um, and a lot of guys like that who are, who are, who are calling you queens and telling you you're just fine the way you are. I listen to a man, a white man on a platform with a black woman telling women who were size 14 that they were not obese. They just think they are. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I mean, I, I, let don't, me, let me, I don't know about let me, that. Let me fit okay. in. The point is, when you are fed that ain't nothing wrong with you, it's always somebody else. It makes you comfortable. And the problem is comfort kills. You knew if you wanted something in this world, you had to go to college and get a degree. Right. Right. That was a sense of survival. I got to do this or I'm going to live life at a lower economic status. Mm -hmm. And if that reality and you are willing to act upon that, what a, do you act upon that same reality when it comes to a mate? No, I agree with you, though. But I think when you talk in terms of survival, we don't think of men as being that sole source for our survival as another person. Right. Well, you know, so what's you know, what's changed a lot of that, though, Stacey? Second. You know, what's changed a lot of that? What? Mm -hmm. Coronavirus. Yeah, because I mean, here's the I thing work from home. But, 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 but here's agree. the thing. A, a lot of women here in Atlanta. We're on that same stuff too. But if you watch shows like The Walking Dead and these post-apocalyptic worlds where society falls apart, you're a smart woman. If society fell apart tomorrow or tomorrow you woke up and it was a zombie apocalypse, can you really protect yourself if 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 civilization falls apart? If there's no police, no fire. I mean, all the stuff you have, how you gonna keep how you gonna keep it? So what you think a man can have any more strength and there's a zombie apocalypse? Well, you're a STEM you're a STEM person, right? <laughs> yes. All right. So let's say you need to open a jar. Do you do women possess the typical hand strength to open jars? Or do they have to be specially made? Right. No. Because how about this? Let's take it away from human beings. Where do you see individual females surviving in the wild by themselves? Polar bears? Go ahead. Even if I give you polar bears, <laughs> go ahead. Um... I mean, pretty much just kind of bears. But other than that, I, I mean, I see what you're saying. Like lionesses gather they, they in a need, group and they all take Because care. women need a group to survive. Mm -hmm. See, sadly, you sound like you're not even in touch with you, really what you are. You honestly sound like you think we're the same. <clears throat> No, not at all. I I don't think men really can clean as well as women, and but, but that's you know, but that's just... but but here, man. But honestly, that comes way down. See, we've taken away the survival needs, food, water, shelter. You're talking right. about first world problems, and what it is right now, mankind has civilized the world so much to. Black women are leading the charge thinking you don't need your men. But guess what? Effectively, you've been separated from your leadership, your headship and your and your mate to be out here by yourself. Well, guess what? Who makes better economic decisions overall, men or women? I think men. Right. But you guess what? If you want to take advantage of a one point one trillion dollar spending power, the best way to get a, a black woman's money is separated from a black man. That's why you spend the most of anybody and have the most 
student loan debt and everything else. An uncovered woman is a is a boon to a society because you are tied there. You need everything. You need it all. And like I said, coronavirus showed that you single women, one thing in particular, uh, you had to go to the grocery store yourself. You didn't have nobody that could go do it for you and risk dying. You had to go out and you had to go while while other women were at home with their husband, with their kids and in their shelter. Who had men to go out, you had to go do you had to go fend for yourself. Right. And that was in now, that was in a decent time. What happens if what happens if you go to the grocery store and there was nothing? You saw the fights to start breaking out. Do you realize that how gen- I don't think a lot of you women realize how fragile society is. And by yourself, you cannot survive. You need a man next to you. If nothing else, but we've taken away men's position to where a lot of women are honestly like, well, damn, if if I can't have what I want, I'd rather have nothing. Okay, and that's what you'll get, nothing. And you'll die alone. (laughs) No, I, I do think that you're absolutely right when it comes to men and women needing each other. Uh, like you said, in the business aspect, I think men make better decisions economically. And I need to correct you on something. This is going to yes. sting. Men don't need you. Men, men, men you don't need that, you. Men don't need women. Men want women. The only well, thing. How are they going to have kids? Okay. That is the only need a man has for a woman. And. I don't want to get that far down the path, but they are working on an artificial womb right now. And that's sad. We have, <laughs> we have reduced women down to a womb. But why have we done it? Because here is the net net of it. We have a 50 plus percent divorce rate in this country, right? Right. Eight out of 10 divorces in the black community are filed by who? The woman? Black women. Eight out of 10. So if one in four black women can ever expect to be married, but eight out of 10 black women are walking away from their marriages. If you simply took away the ability to have filed no fault divorce and just remove women's ability to walk in and out of marriages frivolously, you could increase the marital rate. Men want relationship. Men would prefer to be married. It's you guys who are at, who can't seem to figure it out. You're never happy. And I won't say you're never happy. You're never content. It's always something ain't right. Something ain't right. And every and and, I, and I'm being facetious, but every other race of women in this Western country has has never done this. They've never separated and say we don't need our man. That's why you're the most uncovered, the most unprotected. And then the very men you need, you don't you don't know, you don't understand. And there are far too many look at men, black men with a low level of contempt and disrespect. Whether it's rightful and or not. Kevin, Go ahead. I agree with you completely. But has any other race in this country really gone through? And I'm not going to make it a, a we went through so much because life throws things at people and you just have to move on from it. But at the same time, I think we just need to take into consideration the things that we have to overcome, whereas other people may not have to overcome such things. Such as what? And then we need such to, as what? Um, economic struggle Uh Uh, like you mentioned in another Mm. podcast you said you know we got through slavery jim crow i mean Mm. just all these violent but but what i need you to understand what i need you to understand is prior to 1965 black people were the most married in this country 80 percent so we came out of chattel slavery black laws jim crow segregation church bombings Mm -hmm. rosewood uh 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 the, the massacre up in Tulsa, all that. But after 1965, what happened? We were the most married of any group when we had all those horrible things. And this is what a lot of black women don't like to hear. The government can't. There were a lot of factors that happened. A lot of factors. Integration happened. The the right. the the, the change. The, hold on. But the change in the in the economy happened but the biggest change was in the great society and offered a choice government intervention and or 
government assistance or your man. And a lot of people say, well, if you're sitting there starving and the man ain't eating, ain't working, anybody would be foolish to turn down food. It was not that dire. I was alive when I, was, I saw this. I saw men having to sleep in their car when a lot of these uh, government workers were coming by and they're doing the checks. There were men, black, there were right. men in those projects. But when, black, when <laughs> like it or not, sis, black women, you, you, you threw away your men. You threw them away. And even now, with all the education and all the knowledge, you're the freest you've ever been, the most enlightened, most intelligent, and you still are not going back to get your men. You're expecting the men to come to you. I, I do think we can be a lot more support to our men and we can try to get them out of these negative we don't need you to uh, see. Here's what we don't need. That, that's a that's a, that's a global thing. Men, men, black men don't need Stacy to do that. All we you want to help black people go become a good black wife and have a black family. So you can't do shit about anything yeah. if you don't if you don't have black family. So I hear what yeah, you're saying, yeah. but where's your husband? Well, Kevin, I mean, that's you know, are you single? I've been married twice, so there's the thing. You can't throw and see that. And this is what happens when black women start losing. It ain't about me, sis. You said it yourself. The reason you're single is because you want a man who's over a certain height, a certain income in Birmingham. Kevin, I can drive to Atlanta. But you can't. Oh, oh, oh. See, guys, this is what I mean. When <laughs> no, it gets right get down, to, when it me. gets right down to it, when it starts to get too heavy, it starts being yeah, but yeah, but. You ain't had a man in six years. Sticks. But now I'm doing all the work that it takes to get a man before 30. And I'm listening to your, a, a guy I was dating actually pointed me to you because he was like, I think you have a lot of potential. Just kind of watch this guy. And I've been watching you for the last month and a half. And I completely agree. That's, that's what led me to call in tonight. Because I just want you to give us something that we can do if we're 28 in the danger zone. I've just talked to you. First off, ma'am, I've talked to do? you. I've talked to you for an hour and it should have cost you a thousand dollars. How about that? I've done it. I do it every night. But you got to do more. Right. Okay. You, you have to want to have a black man like you have to like you want your next breath. Because you don't seem to realize you're the only group of women out here who are unprotected. That without a, if not a black man, then who? Brad ain't rushing over yeah. here to get you. Lee ain't trying to deal with you. Ahmed don't want to deal with you. Enrique ain't trying to deal with you. When I say get a black man or die alone, I am dead ass serious. And if a brother told you, listen to this guy because you have potential, I'm one man on a YouTube show. How many women are out there like you who are just clueless about any of this stuff? And they're going to look up and they're going to be 35, 40 years old trying to, <gasps> I need a black man. And they're going to turn around and look at the black man tree and they're none. And then you hear him talk about, well, I couldn't find them or I can't find them on my level. That's why I said, made a broadcast the other day. 90% of you guys are going to have to work after marriage and children. Because only 10% of men in this country make six figures or more most men don't make that and but i'm so just like there aren't women who have the high value husband don't you think there are high value men who don't have wives as well like there's probably just as what is, many okay. of them no but, but but what 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 point does that prove that just proves that if if there are women 27 or 26 to 30 high value men don't have husbands what uh, high uh, high value men don't have husbands what point does that ultimately prove if they don't have wives then that leaves more room for the women who are in the danger zone to be able to go out there and absolutely make some evil and freaking eventually... wrong absolutely 100% wrong wrong <laughs> absolutely absolutely wrong First off, most 83% uh, of millionaires, no, 83% of millionaires and 90% of billionaires are married. 
When you look at the companies you work for, are they run by high value men? How many CEOs do you think are run this country uh, and a fortune 2000 companies are unmarried? Part of being high value is having a spouse. The divorce rate in lower income, lower, uh, the lower class is 70%. The divorce rate in the upper middle class is 20%. High value men aren't the problem. It's modern women who are the problem. You have unrealistic standards. You want everything and you're nowhere close to bringing what you want to the table. And newsflash, a high value man can decide to be 50 years old and go get a 23 year old wife. You cannot be 50 years old and go get a high value man. But again, more women try to sit around and worry about all these other big issues when the best thing you can do is get yourself to the wife status you want to be. But I got news for you. You're going to be one of those 90 percent that's working. Because the only women can, who can demand what you're talking about, the women who can demand what you're talking about are eights, nines, and tens. Pretty, beautiful, or gorgeous. Globally, cross-culturally. Not cute girls. Pretty, beautiful, or gorgeous. Eights, starting around Beyonce. And this is what pisses a lot of women off because they, the reason you're asking for the kind of man you're asking for is because of your college degree and your job. If you worked at Quick Trip, or Dollar General, you wouldn't be asking for a man as high as you are. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I'm okay with, you know, just a guy who makes a decent living and we have good things. But I you just said you want wanted to make I a you said you. you may want him to make hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. I do. So don't lie to me. I have a good memory. But you think high value is in the 300,000s, correct? No, I did not say that. I'm talking about when for the kind of, that comes into consideration. No, high value men start at $10,000 a month. $120,000 a year is where it starts at as far as money. But high value men is just not about money. But when you're talking about what you want, you don't want to have to work. You wanted multiple children. And that's fine. Yeah, but that's you don't. True. But I know. And see, far too many of you ladies start saying what you, what you think will make you look good, and the truth is, that's what you want. That's what's made this show popular. I talk about what women truly want, and it doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter from women who are five foot four, two hundred and sixty pounds, or from women who are LA nines. You still want the same thing. The difference is the LA nine can get it. Most of you can't. And you just said it. You're a University of Alabama graduate, 28 years old, and you want a man making top 10% money. And you ain't, and here's the hardcore truth. I'm taking time because it's going to help somebody else. You haven't had a relationship in six years. You're not even suitable for it. Your relationship muscles have atrophied. You should be. I mean, I'm dated. But I hear what you're saying. It's different. It'd be no different than saying, you know what? I went, I read books. You went to college and got a degree. I read all the books you read at the library. Uh, is it the same? Yeah, that, that makes sense. No, it's not. It's not the same because one went through a process and a structure. You have been unattached. You have not had to decide the longest, the longest you've ever spent cooperating with a man has been a year. That does not prepare you to be a wife. Right. So sitting here telling me, you know, you should do this and you should do that. And that, you, what so many women want is a quick fix, a magic pill. And I'm sorry, I don't have it. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of money and a lot of investment and a lot of time. Um, here's what I've said. You need to do these five things. Understand the kind of lifestyle you want. Be very clear about it. Two, get brutally honest about and, and seriously scrutinize yourself from head to toe. Bucket naked, out of the shower, no makeup, no hair extensions. Scrutinize yourself from head to toe, inside and out. Three, 
Get a second job and be prepared to pay the money it's going to cost to invest in yourself because you cannot watch YouTube videos of level up people and think you're going to get knowledge that you can really act on. Three, four, educate yourself about the men, the lifestyle and everything else. And then five, take action. But what will ruin it for most women is they're not going to spend a goddamn dime. Most and sadly, far too many black women think I got the JJ. So that's all I should have to do. And I go back. And why is that important? Because I go back to what you asked me before the first time. Well, what are the Asian women in this one? Well, what are they doing to willing to do to separate themselves? A whole hell of a lot. In defense of African-American women, we actually try to do it ourselves. We go get our hair done. We get our nails done. We do all these things that we really can't sometimes afford given the long extensive economic history that we have and so we still actually invest in in those things okay and is what you're doing what men want uh, it might not be but i do well give then uh, no the, no the, hold, on, hold on hold uh, on uh, 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 hold on say that again I think that as African Americans, no, 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 women, no. I asked you a direct I, question: Is what you're doing what men want? Yes, no. Yes, and let me explain. No, there is no explanation. I'm going to tell you no. You're wrong. See, you don't. Even, again, this is this is this is where you're at, sis. You want black men to accept what you want to do. Black men have been saying for decades what they want, but women like yourself refuse, re-fucking refuse to give men what they want. You want to give them what you think they should accept and then get upset when they don't accept it. Well, let me ask you, when you go to your favorite restaurant and they just sit a plate of food in front of you and you say, well, no, I was going to get something different. This is what we have. Eat it. And I need a good tip. Would you leave that restaurant or would you eat up and say, I got to come back? I would leave. Well, then the question is, if all the stuff you're doing is not yielding the result, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result, right? Right. Then why don't you start asking the black men that you want what they want and then do that? I will do that. I don't know how to go. I guess I could just ask my African-American male friends. Mm, well, that would be a good place to start. But you all, you could also ask the guy who broke up with you why he left. Is he unmarried? The guy you were with in college? No, he's not married either. You, so you could ask him, hey, why? I don't why do think we he's that great of a catch. Well, that doesn't sound Sorry. too smart for you. <laughs> well, I was younger then. Yeah. Again, but yeah. All right. So again, this has been a good case study in exactly why so many sisters are by themselves. Because there's this <laughs> point in you that you just, at the end of the day, it's like, I'm not, I know what the right answers are, but I'm not going to do it. What it really shows me is how little, especially college educated women, how little you actually value the image of most black men. I've said it before and I'll say well, it again. I, Listen, I said it before and I said it again. Women tell men what they think they deserve by their attitude and their looks. Yeah. And I'll be honest before listening to you, I never thought of like going to an image consultant. So I did pick up some really good tidbits from you. So I will actually implement that into my uh, system of finding a man and I will see how that works. Well, I've said so there's four I'm things, four things. See, when you want a top 10% man, it's like wanting to get into mm -hmm. an Ivy League school. You either do what you have to do or you won't get in. You need therapy, personal trainer, image consultant, and matchmaker. Since I got to let it go after this, but you don't have time to do this on your own. The worst thing you can do is try to fly this plane yourself. You're not qualified.
But see, I just talked about turning over control to somebody else. And a lot of sisters, especially our educated sisters, have a big problem with control. You don't want to, it's like, but this is what, but when you ask, this is what your competition is doing. You know, your competition, they ain't one an elite man. This is what Kim Kardashian, the Kardashians, you can like them, what they, mama and them, but her mama said, go get that money from them black dudes. Up, oh, you too, you too fat. You, you costing the brand money. Yeah, uh huh. The beauty pads and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah, mm, there's a lot to be learned. If you want an elite level man, you better be an elite level catch. Thanks for calling in, though. I got it. Oh, Jesus, more people called in here. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you, Kevin. You know, there's a lot to be said for a lot of women, man, that a lot of our women just don't seem to really want to value what men have to. I mean, if you don't want to give men what they want off the rip, what does that mean you're going to give them once you're married? Your microphone's not connected. Uh, Karen, you can come back in. You can come back in, Karen. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, barely. You, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Karen. Your microphone is you're borging and I can't hear you. I can't do that to the show. Uh, Betty, you're going to have to get back on cam. Or I'm going to have to. OK, go ahead. Go ahead and mute yourself. Hello. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. How are, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. How uh, old are I was you? Like Oh, I'm 24. I'm 24. Uh-oh. You don't even fall into these categories. <laughs> huh? You're too young for this discussion. What's going on? I know. I, I like watching these type of videos. Uh, I I listen to roommate the roommates. So okay, but I'm going to get to the, the women who actually are a little bit more in this age range. But you can fall back and watch. Oh, okay. okay. Dawn, go ahead. Unmute yourself. I asked Don to unmute. There you go. Hello. Okay, can you hear me? I can Hi. now. Hi, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Kevin. What What do you got for me? Um. Well, first of all, there are a few things that I do not agree with. Um. Now I am 45 years old. Okay. And and you mentioned that we're talking about divas queens and bosses first of all i i grew up listening to beyonce and mariah carey that's what i consider diva and i just think it's just a term of endearment you know it's, it's something for a woman to feel empowered uh, empowered to do about. what so empowered to do what it's an empowering feeling you know, just at, at a point where they where they're very confident in themselves and okay. And, what does your husband have to say know, about they, it? Whereas my husband, I'm divorced. All right. So uh, name me name me the name me the white women that run around calling themselves divas, or name me the name me name me any other race of women that call themselves these things. Um, Divas, queens, and bosses. I mean, Tell me how China, uh, Asian women empower themselves. Tell me how white women empower themselves. Show me how Asian, I mean, Middle Eastern and Hispanic women empower themselves. Okay, but why, why do we have to be like them, though? I mean, uh, well, I'm asking because we're humans. Okay, you asked a question that you can't over talk me. Oh, I'm not. I apologize. I, I apologize. I'm not trying to over But my you. thing is. Empower, uh, first off, can you turn off the YouTube channel in the background? Yeah. All right. All right. It's not a problem about this empowerment, ma'am. It's pedestalizing. That's what it, it's not empowerment. It's pedestalizing. Did you hear the previous caller yeah. who called herself a boss? 
And when she had been in business for 10 years, but she had no employees, what is she a boss of? Well, I mean, again, that, you know, being a boss, you can, it, it's the term of, you know, running things, running your own business. And no, you don't necessarily, necessarily no, have to have no, that's not true. Let's look up the definition of boss. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't necessarily, you, you don't necessarily have to have employees to consider yourself a uh -huh. boss. boss. Noun, a person in charge of a worker or organization, union bosses, uh -huh. uh, or verb, giving orders or domineering manner. That sounds more like it. The, bo the verb boss makes a lot of sense, especially when black women use it, because they're certainly not in charge of workers. Well, um, I can, I'm in charge of my own schedule. Okay. Uh, you're, do you have okay, any kids? Do you have any children? Yes, I do. How many? Two. Boys or girls? Both. Boy and girl, 20 three and 24. Okay. But when, when they were five or eight years old, remember those mm -hmm. years, they could have been in charge of making up their bed. Does that make them bosses? Yeah. Bosses of their own domain. Are you trying to be damn? <laughs> are you really trying to be serious? Man, we, I mean, so, I, I honestly, man, but we, if that's how we're going to go with it, then this conversation really is kind of pointless. If you're going to tell okay. me a five and an eight year old is a boss of something, then that goes into the delusion factor. Okay. All right. Touche. All See, right. Well, far too many black far, women want to be right, man. And you just want to even, you know, when something's wrong, you'll still try to find a way to be right. But I, hey, but I am compromising. You know, we're meeting in the middle, but I, I just, Okay, you know, well, meet in the middle. Meet me in the middle. How does calling yourself a diva, a queen, or a boss facilitate healthy relationships with men? Well, the men that I encounter, they they actually, you know, like, well, I, you know, I don't, I don't know too many women that call themselves divas. Uh, and how does this bosses, facilitate, how does it facilitate healthy interaction with the men by calling yourself somebody in charge. Well, Who leads in, okay. Okay. You're divorced, right? Yes. So am I. And one of the big problems in a lot of marriages in particular in black America is who leads, who's supposed to lead the male. Hmm. So, if if I were your husband, how could the I lead you? The, so if I were if I were your husband, how household. could I lead you if you were if you're a boss? A boss of my schedule, a boss of my work. A okay, boss so of... again, that's pedestalizing and overinflating importance. Why? Why is it so important to to make things sound so grand that are just common? That's why I use the kids okay. example. That's why I use the kids making up a bed. Yeah, they feel good about it. But in the grand scheme of things, it ain't nothing. And the damn sure you being the boss. But far too many black women, want you want to pat on the back for just average stuff. Well, that's, well, making the bed, I mean, that's part, you know, well, just say, I, just I, say, ma'am. You I, see, I she's struggling to sit back and say, "Damn, you got me." <laughs> Check. Well, I mean, we're talking about in rooms, you know. I yeah, I and that's what we're talking room. about. We're talking about how many black women who call themselves bosses are in charge of anything. I feel like if a woman own, runs her own business and do not go into a nine to five is considered a boss. All right.
So, and you know what else? You know what else? You know what else? I mean, but see, man, that makes sense because so many black women won't call themselves fat or morbidly obese. They'll say they're BBW. See, a lot of you black women love to make up your own definitions. Fuck, the, forget the dictionary. We're going to make up our own words. We're going to make up, we're going to, it's going to have our own meanings. But here's the thing. The world doesn't work that way. Your arteries still say you're morbidly obese. One of the biggest pushbacks I get is from black women talking about weight. Well, I don't have a weight problem. And you know, beauty is okay. in the eye of the beholder. No, be beauty, like is, beauty is beauty is pretty well beauty is pretty well universal. There are some subjective things. How tall are you? Five seven. Okay. What is the average weight of an American man? The average weight, I would say maybe one eighty five ninety. Was okay. And what's the weight of an average? Nice what's the what's the weight of an Amer an average American female? I would say maybe one fifty, one fifty five. The weight of an average American man is one hundred and sixty eight pounds. The weight of an average American woman fifty five years ago who were the same height, used to be 120 pounds, and it shot up to 166 pounds. The average American black female is 187 pounds. The average black woman weighs more than the average black man at her height. Is that normal? Mm -hmm. Is that normal? To, to compare to what statistics? Normal. Uh, uh, <laughs> Normal because comparing, uh, no, 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 I got you. No, 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 no. See, you about to try to pull this white <laughs> shit on me. No, no. Normal compared a man to a damn woman. Is it, should a woman who's five foot five weigh more than a man who's five foot five? Well, absolutely not. Well, but they I mean, do. But they ideally. do. But they do. No, ideally, it's called they do. You know, hey, Go ahead, make excuse. Just, Go ahead, make excuses not, for it. My, I'm not making up an excuse. I'm just saying that you know the options are very low for Black women. What do you mean? Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop right there. You're gonna have to. You have to justify that. What do you mean? I'm, I'm justifying it in terms of there's a lot of good men that are locked up. Let me stop you right there. Let me stop you right there, ma'am. Okay. I need to stop you right there. I need to okay. stop you right there. I need you to pay attention. 51% of black men are single and childless. 64% are in the middle class. So you can go ahead and take that 1980s talking point back over to color purple land because that shit is factually inaccurate and un true according to black people's statistics go to blackdemographics.com saying as though you want to know oh, those are white folks then go to blackdemographics.com black statistics for black people about black people and they'll show you well so, way, so, so 51 percent. so and, if, oh no ma'am see what you did you just try to skip see every time i make a point you you instead of saying damn i didn't know that you're gonna still try to be right okay. Instead of saying, well, bro, I didn't know that. I didn't, no, ma'am. Instead of saying, you know what, bro, I didn't know that. 51% of single and childless, that means they got unmarried, no kids. And 64% in the middle class, damn, I didn't know that. See, what that says is there are plenty of black men out here who are available to marry and have kids. Why can't black women seem to get them? What age group is that? No, ma'am. Why? No, no. What marrying age? And Those are the, the marrying age. They don't keep statistics on 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 teenagers. What and what Ma'am, it's marrying people? age. It's they don't keep statistics on children. They're adults. See how you see this is what I mean. And this is the Not so so so, so so to the so to the previous caller who wondered what all the acrimony is between black men and black women, caller, this is it right here. We got a black woman here. I'm trying to educate her on why she's wrong on the facts. And she's and every even when I made points, she'll keep moving the goalpost. Well, give me the give me the facts, the data, and statistics. Well, give me the who who calculated them. Well, it ain't right. Look at the end of the day. This is why so many of y'all are by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're disagreeable. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Well, mm. no, we're having a conversation, but you're, you know, we're yeah. having a conversation. Well, I'm the like, conversation, I'm but it has to be, to but it has to be, the conversation has to be in, in, in truth, though, ma'am. I don't mind having a conversation, but if we just going to have opinions, that's not really a conversation. Okay, do you believe, okay, how about this? How, how about this? Let's start over. Let's. Re do you believe that 51% of black men are single and childless? Do you believe that? Uh, No. Okay. There you go. What percentage of black men do you believe are single and childless? Maybe 20%. Okay, so by your own def by your own headspace, you reduce mm -hmm. the effective level of black men by roughly sixty percent. So now you can go and make the argument of scarcity. Mm -hmm. It is. No, it's not. It really it's is. Scarce. No, it's not. It really is not. See the facts. See facts no. are stubborn things, man. You can believe whatever you want, but facts are stubborn. Just because you don't believe two mm -hmm. plus two is four doesn't change the fact that two plus two is indeed four. Well, I do believe that two plus two is indeed. Well, four. then, I'm then, 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 that, then, then I'm, tell me, I'm, then tell me why you don't believe the the that fifty one percent of black men are single and childless. Tell me why you don't believe that fact. Okay, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and I've been in Atlanta for about twenty years, mm -hmm. and there are not a lot of black. Did I say men black men in Atlanta, man? Either. Did I say black men in Atlanta, ma'am? I, no, I'm saying. No, 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 no. But, but, but the stat that I said, did I say Atlanta? You did not say Atlanta. No, you did. Okay, so do you believe it based on Atlanta I, or not? I see, have to go where. It, no, ma'am. So, ma'am. So, what you need to do is what you need to do because I live in Atlanta too. Mm. So, what you're gonna need to do is tell me where you getting that twenty percent from. But if from every day, it's no, ma'am, your anecdotal eyeball experience. No, man, your anecdotal your anecdotal eyeball experience does not change the Department of Bureau of Labor Statistics and the CDC. See, facts are stubborn things, ma'am. You can have your opinion, and you can be as wrong as to No, it's not reality. That's your twisted reality. It's your twisted reality, but it don't matter. It twisted. It's twisted because you you talking about bosses. And being in charge of stuff, and that implies a business mind, and you can't even accept a fact. I can't accept a fact. No, you I'm cannot, ma'am, because I just gave you, I just gave you a fact, and I and I will, and I've cited my sources, but you still won't stop. Well, those statistics are not. Those numbers are not helping my everyday, day-to-day -day interaction, you know, in, in real life. I'm, I'm at the grocery stores. I'm in well, and how about, oh, oh, you're talking about you now. Now we talk about you. Well, well, if I asked your husband why y'all divorced, what would he tell me? Domestic violence. Okay. How, how often did you beat his ass? No, I, I'm the victim. Mm. And, and I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, it, it was a growing pain. I thank God I got out alive. And how long have you been divorced? Uh, it, uh, for two years. Two years. How long were y'all married? Uh, for about seven months. Seven months. Now, hold on. By mom, mm -hmm. by, I know I got a new calculator, but you got kids that are like in their 20s. Right. By two different guys or by one? By one. Why didn't you marry him? The last one? No, the one that, that impregnated you once or twice. Oh, um, he 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 went to jail. Oh, so you pick ass whoopers and felons. And then you're gonna complain about well, what other I, mean, I need you to stop right here, ma'am. I need you to slow the whole I bad. need you I need you to slow the whole French toast down. I'm not gonna let you get on here and talk about what black men are not when you picking whoop dudes that whoop your ass and are the felons. See, I'm not gonna sit around and let you black women just sit around and talk about hey, black men ain't here and ain't this, they ain't that. When in your own life you pick shit. Yeah, take a nice strong drink, sip it all. Cause you're talking about black men to share my reflection, and I'm tired of sisters like you running our reputation in the ground because you pick poorly. 
A black man. No, black man. Uh, no. You had twenty million to pick from, but you picked the felon mm. once to have two babies by and, a, and then Ike Turner. All these black people in Atlanta. Why are you picking these scrubs? That's what's left. If you don't get off my goddamn Aside phone, from the marriage get out of get off my the, phone. I don't want to keep it. Th th that's what's left, huh? That's what's left. Mm -hmm. The black mecca and all your wop seems to attract is felons and, and and abusers. Then you need to put that shit in the in the in uh get some maintenance done. Okay, there are some good men. Well, then why don't you attract them? Then why don't you date them? I, I, I don't. I, it's difficult. It's like a needle in a haystack. No, it's not a needle in a haystack. I live here. Yes, it is. I live here, and I date good black women. No, why can't you see? Let me back down, ma'am. Relationships are reflective. We attract what we are. When I was broken, I attracted broken. And see, what I'm having a problem with is you are trying to make black men the problem and you are definitely problematic. Everything I've presented to you that is a fact that you can verify yourself, you've said no, 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 no. And who the hell wants to deal with a woman like that? Persian. Persians? Yes, and they're okay. Then, so what? Okay, okay. They're high, okay. Then where's your? So you you got a Persian fiance? He's not a fiance, but I am dating one. Okay, again, just because someone would dust it off does not mean he wants to marry you. I've talked about this too. I don't have to be married. Exactly. It Let me go ahead and help you. Get, this is ooh, black young black women. Pay attention. These these are your mamas. And your aunties, and they telling you that black men don't yeah. exist because they can't get their shit right. That's not true. Yeah, of course not. Of, of course not. Of course not. You I could get no you could get your shit yourself. right so much that you picked somebody that was whooping your ass after you picked a fella. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's right, ma'am. No, yeah, and then you see the problem is here's why you run the problem because you keep he trying was to down because you keep no get off my phone. Keep telling me that I'm wrong. You're wrong, Kevin. You're wrong. You're wrong. See? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. Gonna sit there and talk about how horrible black men are. Right. I got both barrels, no waiting. Come on. This is why I do this show. So you younger ladies can hear. This is your mamas. These are your aunties. To the sister who was a caller earlier, married for 17 years. This is the problem. This is the problem. This is why there's so much acrimony. Because how is a black man supposed to deal with it? And this is the these are the kind of women the age y'all think I should be dating. You shouldn't be dating no women in your 20s. You should be dating women who are more age appropriate. That is what it is. I'll be damned. I'll be double damn before I do. Your mic's not create, connected, uh, young lady. Every fact. No. I don't believe that 51% of black men are single and childless. I have nothing to base that on other than my warped opinion. Only about 20%. Oh, I think the average man is 200 pounds. Oh, we got time tonight. We got time tonight. Time tonight. Michi, none of your microphones are connected. You know, normally I would allow somebody to state their point. But when I start to sense that you just want to come spin a narrative, and the narrative is going to be tearing down stuff that I know to be factually true. No, you go do that on somebody else's channel. You go to somebody else's platform that will let you sit there and tear, 
tear black men down. Nope. You don't have to agree with everything I say, but you can't sit back and tell me that the truth ain't true. Again, with a guy married, been divorced a year, they were married seven months, and they got divorced because of domestic violence. 45, two kids. What is all that in between? Do you think she was picking state senators and congressmen and pastors and leaders of industry along those ways after she had the felons one, two kids? You think she was... So you got one, two kids by the, the dude that's in jail then every guy you, for the last next 20 years, then you're running Ike. And now you want to sit back and talk about a Persian. If you don't get off my goddamn phone. No, uh, your, your microphone's not connected. Nope, not going to have you do it. Just no different than I would allow a, a, a man to come over here and run down black women, uh, especially in the light of facts. Not going to do it. Carlos Miller, why? See, let me, tell, let me help you. This dude, this guy coming. <sighs> I ain't going to do it. See, one of the things we love to do, and uh, I've ceased doing it. If y'all ever ask me a question, well, who are you and why shall I? Don't. We love to ask black men, well, why? Oh, who? Invalidate black men. Nope. No one's forcing you to be here. Leave. All right. Michi, you're not, uh, your audio's not connected. So I'm going to go ahead and drop you back because your audio's not connected and you're not paying attention. Your audio's not connected. So I'm going to put you back there. Do, 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 do. And the funny thing is this I get more, I tend to get more pushback from guys. <laughs> Ooh, let me go in the comment section let's see I know it's probably cooking right about now hmm so there we go thank you Andre Hatchet see they keep trying to act like black men are felons That's go back and listen to that segment black men are felons abusers and you know if I let her talk long enough they gonna be on the down low and I'm like if that's what you attract with your with yourself you need to put that joker in the shop and you gotta ask yourself women talk about the media the media the media is constructed up. these are the women of her age cohort are the women that have been talking this crap about black men for 30 plus years they're the ones that have been in the media, in the beauty shops. Like I said, these are your mamas and your aunties. So you wonder why things are as jacked up as they are? It starts in one place and it ain't with us. So, Generation X black women, man. Minister Jap talked about these. I've tried to be nice, man, but no, I try to be reasonable, but I can't. I, there's only so much I can deal with. Uh, your audio is not connected. Do, 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 do. So I will do this and I will let it run. You know, shout out to uh, sis in Birmingham. You know, um, I, I let me see if I can spin this back. All right. Level set. If you are out there and you want to deal with a man, 90 percent of women, 90 plus or 80 plus percent of women in this country are going to have to work after marriage. For most people, it takes two incomes. And black women, you need to get all right with the fact that it's going to take you and another black man to propel you into the upper middle class and beyond. You're not going to do it on your one salary. 
by yourself. It's not. Two people to live a middle class or upper middle class life. Two. And for the women who have to have these high value six figure men, you better be what they want and where they are. They're not in Birmingham. They're not they're They are in international cities doing what they should be doing. And women who want them go. You know, there used to be a time if you wanted to get into movies, you had to go to Hollywood. You couldn't stay in Omaha and hope to be discovered. And online, got news for you. High value men are not on Tinder. They're not on Bumble. Nope. That's why you better get a matchmaker. You better get, you better get yourself in shape to be look, to be on seeking arrangements. That's right. So I know what I'm talking about. acrimony all right here we go uh we'll try to let you guys get back in if your mics don't get in i can't hear you oh i'm glad i dropped you ahmed ali uh going back to your mama why does this show man going back to your mammy But you call back in and see if you can and you can ask your question. God, I tend to get packages delivered. To. Y'all want to get on Tinder? Y'all want to do Tinder? Y'all want to see what's on Tinder? Let's do Tinder. Let's have some humor in here. You know? Mm-hmm. Seeking arrangements. But if you're going to be on seeking arrangements, man, you better. Uh... <laughs> Whew, you... Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. The first one out the gate. How blessed. Oh, I'm on Tinder. I am on Tinder. I'm on Tinder. I'm on Bumble. But I'm on there for a different reason. You it's guys okay. can re- remember that. Let's do Tinder. Let's have some humor in here. <laughs> Are y'all crazy? If I tell you about something on my show, it's part of my public life. I've talked about being on Tinder. Why do you think I know what's going on in this world? Do you know how many women have hit me up on Tinder? Because I will let, let's, you know, let's talk game. How many women have hit me up on Tinder? Saw you on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Here it is. And in my description, I'm like, yeah, don't, mm -mm. no, thank you. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Mm. Can't help it. Can't help it. Uh, I may, I may come on back, dude, if you want to. If you want to ask me a question, you can bring yourself on back. It's not going to change. Cry babies. Why are you talking about my mommy? Hello? Hello? Uh oh, how are you? Okay. Go ahead. Topic, and I've been, um, my fiance actually introduced me to you, is from San Diego. Um, so I've been looking at your videos yesterday and today, and I really want to let you know that I really appreciate it. and. I want to thank you for it. Well, thank you, young lady. I appreciate you calling in. You're in Ethiopia? It's a bad connection right yes, now. Yes, I live in Ethiopia. Well, good. Well, I wish you guys all the best, you know. 
And if I say something that you don't like, eh, just listen to it a little bit longer. Something else Thank probably better so come along. But all the best to you guys, and I hope you have a beautiful life together. Be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> Thank you so very much. You're so well welcome. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Suda. Bye. She's cute. You got you a good one there, man. So for all you crybabies who are in there, you feel like I'm, you talking, baby. <laughs> Why you talking about my mama? Look, man. I don't target anything. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. What in the heck? What happened here? There it is. It's a conversation. All right. So, why is this important? Because in my profile, I try to I tell folks I'm not interested in plus size women. But these women will still hit you up in the inbox like, mm. and I'm not going to read you the messages, but I'm like, really? Uh, let's take that down. See, now I need you to understand something. Why did I do that? I need you ladies to ask yourself a question. Imagine if you are at eight, nine, or 10, you, and you're fit and you're in shape and you're beautiful, and then a broke dude, a dude that worked at a convenience store, part-time, was trying to holler at you. You'd be a little offended, and you would be right to. But we have far too many of our women who feel like they should, like they deserve I don't even want to do that. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I don't even want to do that. I don't even want to do that. If you are fit, feminine, and friendly, I don't want to troll y'all. If you are fit, feminine, and friendly, you have given yourself a far better shot at landing a man. That's the reality. Because so many, you know, I eight out of so many women are getting so big. That X is a mile out of you win by default. You win by default. Oh, what's she talking about? Somebody in here crying? That's so unfair. Why is it that you guys think that it's all right for, that a man should have to be? Yeah, dummy. Hey, Brittany, you think that's, let me go ahead and highlight this. I need you to, I need you guys to understand this dumb chick. Let me go ahead and highlight you. Hey, Brittany, why don't you go ahead and call in? Let me go ahead and highlight this and copy it. This is what Brittany Washington said. And she don't seem to get it. <clears throat> Kevin has on $500 cologne and name brand suit makes over $10,000 a month. And he's on Tinder. Yes. And then she's laughing. You think I'm, you think I'm embarrassed? You don't even know why. The funny thing is, where's your husband? And guys, don't tell her to shut up. I don't, I, I laugh because she's obviously new. Obviously new. She's always saying dumb stuff. I know. And that, but the thing is, but, but here's the thing, but she's always here. See, a lot of you guys need to stop getting triggered by some of the crap that women say because they keep coming back because see the difference is she has nothing and that's fine 
<laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> oh, hey, Brittany, why don't you call in? Everybody look at, stop what you're doing. Everybody go over, look at Brittany. You know, where's her comment? I wish I could find it. I wish I could find it. Why don't you call in, Brittany? She ain't going to call in. You know, a lot of women, you know, I feel sorry for a lot of women. They they seriously want to, um, you know, there are women who come to this to the show and they're honestly looking for answers. Um, but sadly, many of them can't get them because they get weighed down in this in a lot of stuff that they hear a lot of women say. And one of the hard things for a lot of women today, if if you want to actually have a better shot at an outcome. I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be hard to hear, but you're going to have to get over the fact of being liked by a bunch of other women. You're going to be alone. It's like the women in my group, the mix, you know, um, I can even tell in my group how the level of discourse and the level of the women are, are steadily increasing just by them being around one another. And, <laughs> Britney's really Otasia. See, in her in, in in a woman's like Britney's mind, I'm on Tinder because I'm desperate. I'm on Tinder because I can't get a woman. You and we all know that she's on the short bus for that one. And see, that's that's I need you guys to understand. That's how women like her can sleep at night. They got to try to tear down what reality is. She is just like their previous caller. When you can give them facts, data, statistics, observable reality, the delusion is so deep for some of these women that the only way they can go through life is to stay asleep. That's why The Matrix was such a good movie. Uh, and Cypher. Remember the guy who turned against Neo? A lot of these women are like Cypher. They want to go back to the Matrix. They want to go asleep. See, she's over here because she hears the interactions, the conversations, and she sees something happening that is, obviously has not happened in her life, And she, but she can't go back. She's like, I can't unsee it. I can't unhear it. And there are thousands of people over here night after night, and phone call after phone call, but it's too hard for her reality. So it's like, well, if I could just make him wrong, see, if I could just make him wrong, then I can go back to sleep. It doesn't work that way, young girl. It just doesn't. Call in. She will never call in. She won't call in because at the end of the day, the problem is the stuff I'm talking about bothers some of these women so much. It doesn't matter how I come at it. It's just it's the reality. Um, like the previous caller. She wasn't a bad looking woman by any stretch of the imagination. The previous caller was not a bad looking woman. She wasn't. But. OK, let's be let's be honest, guys. She, I say she wasn't a bad looking woman. In her mid 40s. But who thinks that she has made reasonable dating decisions. I mean, just based on what she's told us, she'd been married and divorced. See, only in black America is being divorced counted as, you're, you're a failure. Every Y'all would rather be in 20-year relationships and never get married and think y'all are winning something. You're dumb. She was divorced longer than she was married seven months okay married for seven months been divorced for a year all right and 
let's just say for a fact he was abusive. Okay. And let's say he hid that fact until the marriage. All right. Then she was right to get out of it. But the guy asked the question, what is a 40 plus year old woman? Her picker is so off that she's marrying somebody who's abusive. That's the question you got to ask. Why are you at 40? Two or 43 years old doing going into a marriage, a first marriage with an abusive man. Then the other shoe dropped. I found out she had mentioned the kids in the bedroom example. They're making up the bed example. They're in their 20s. So that means start having your kids around 20, 21 years old, very young and unmarried. Baby mama. She had an issue with the whole boss construct. I mean, again, I don't make this stuff up. And then to come to find out, well, you picked a man who turned out to be a criminal. And then 20 years later, you picked an abuser. And then you want to say that the pickings are slim out here. That's the problem the, the, the men on, online have been talking about for so long. You want to know uh, I'm, uh, this dude, why these shows target women? They don't target women. It just sounds like targeting women because you've only heard the conversation one way. For 30 plus years, you've only heard the conversation from women's point of view and arguably Women's point of view is much different than men's point of view, right? So now you hear somebody having a conversation the other way and you they have the nerve to say this is targeting women. When you have 30 plus years and hundreds of billions of dollars in media bought and spent uh, talking about how black men are not faring. You don't get to ask questions about men talking about women when the deck has been stacked and you got a 30 to 40 year head start on the conversation. You can never ask that question. The men have to men got a good two decades worth of media before you can ever start to level the playing field. So please stop asking that disingenuous question. It's foolish on its face. So thank you guys for calling in. Like I said, the whole diva, queen, boss, level up, all code word for women who are difficult to get along with, disagreeable, over the hill, overweight or unattractive, or baby mamas. Every show, it's gotten to the point to where I actually have people I, I actually have people saying that I am paying people to call in. That's right. I got folks saying, oh, man, this can't be real. I, I got to have paid actors. That is how far the delusion is gone. That that just shows you how hard of a reality this is to, for some people to accept. They you can honestly have people who believe but I am sitting behind the scenes like some master manipulator and I'm paying people to do this. So let's, let's understand how that would work. I would have to do what? Hire an agent, have a casting call, get paid actors or actresses to call in to a show. Then I'd have to do what? Write out a script, some sort of treatment. And we'd have to practice back and forth. All that in an elaborate rules to do what? Trick YouTube people? No offense. And then you'd have to keep all that a secret. You know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars that would take? It doesn't even make business sense. Who has that kind of money? 
I mean, think about it, Carl. Think about what they're saying. You should go spend hundreds of thousands of dollars just to make people make them look bad. Y'all crazy. Be losing money like a motherfucker. <laughs> so the delusion is very real. So thank you to Stacy from in Birmingham for calling. Um, thank you to shout out to the sister in Ethiopia. She was really nice to talk to. And even the woman in Atlanta, ma'am, I suggest therapy. I could not talk to you because you were so far gone. You you need therapy, ma'am. When you're sitting here saying that it's all black men and black men ain't this black, you need therapy. Therapy, therapy, therapy. On and on and on. Um, tomorrow night, we're going to have a smoke show. Tomorrow night, we talk. We have the smoke show. Yeah, you. Yep, we're going to have a smoke show. Friday night, smoke fest. So, you want to call in, load it for bear. All you have to do is get over there. You got a critique? But here's the thing. The only thing I ask you is this. We're going to talk about what I say. Not what you heard that I said. Not what people said that I said. If you have a disagreement with me, cool. We're going to talk about what I say. Let's have a meeting of the minds. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, but in then, but until then, I thank everybody for calling in. Uh oh, I want to do this. Uh, I gotta do. It. Ike has his own song. I am the king, and will not be. I am the, I am the, I am the king, and king, king, and will not. Somebody ask this thing. Yeah, Kevin has a Tinder and Bumble for research. Thank you. I don't date nobody off Tinder and Bumble. I have met people off Tinder and Bumble, but I've met them and happenstance in the real world. Matter of fact, on my channel right now, there's a, a, a really nice looking dark skinned woman that I met her on one of those. Uh, we exchanged messages back and forth and I'm standing up there in that pink fur coat and that pink velvet. Thing. I, I filmed it, live streamed it. It's still right here. And in the video, I said, I met her online. Guys, I don't do anything um, I don't talk about anything on my channel that I'm a, that I'm ashamed of. But you honestly think I'm on Tinder or trying to find a wife? You out of your mind? You out of your crazy mind? Somebody said talk about the dating scene in Atlanta. Okay. Um, all right. It's nuts. The dating scene here is off the chain. Let me tell you why. I'm deciding whether or not to stay in Atlanta or possibly move to L.A. Shout out to Hamid. Appreciate it. Uh, Godfather, Blue Henry there, working late, my best life. Turned on its head, living on purpose. Thank you. Cool. Here's the thing. Um, I came, when I decided to come to Atlanta, I gave myself, I said, I'm going to stay here for a year and see how I like it. Um, but I will tell you, dating in Atlanta it's challenging. Why? I will not lie. Yes, you have a lot of black people here and it is a Mecca. But one of the things that you cannot get over here is the STD rate in this state, in this city, is through the roof. Okay? So if you are a man out here on your purpose, on your grind, and arguably, a man like myself who is has a public profile that's growing, I meet beautiful women daily. Let's let's be honest, guys. T, you've been around for a minute. Um, even when I was in Oklahoma, I would meet people. With, people recognize me, and I I'm like, what's gonna happen when I have a million subscribers? I meet people, and I don't, and I and I'm not like a lot of guys who'd be like, oh man. I, question why they coming in, especially if you know me. But here's the thing. I am not going to be on the cover of a uh, national Enquirer or TMZ talk about I'm, I, I've got hot crotch. No, 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 no. You ain't, if you ever hear some salacious rumor about me that I got somebody pregnant, 
or I, I'm not sloppy. I am not a sloppy man. So one of the biggest things about dating in Atlanta is one, there is a high STD rate. You can, you can, um, in my opinion, you have to go through extra steps. You know, I always keep my test updated. Uh, and anybody who I do interact with, cause I, I do interact with people down here. Uh, but that was first on the, got to get that taken care of. As soon as there's interest there, pop, got to go. Got to process, put it this way. I have a process and procedure to where we both make sure we have a clean bill of health. That was pre-Rona. Uh, number two. Um, I'm a public person. I'm an influencer now. And that presents its own challenges. Why? Because even two weeks ago, you see what happened when I'm just out with somebody who's another influencer doing business. All of a sudden, it's everywhere. It is not fair to somebody who's not a public person to expose them to social media scrutiny. So what do you do when you're a public person? Well, it's kind of like... Um, I would assume it's kind of like being an actor, actress, an athlete. That's why you see people in Hollywood dating the same people. Um, because you may end up having somebody say, oh, I saw them over here. I saw them over there. See, I keep my personal life very private. Uh, because one, out of respect for the people I deal with, they didn't sign up for that. I, that's why you never hear me talk about them because when you start having uh, detractors and critics, believe it or not, people will sit there and comb through videos, comb through everything else to try to find something to just be like, ha ha. Mm -mm. And this is another thing. So let's, let's talk about this. So why is this? How can I make this relevant? So guys understand something. If you want to increase your value as a man, this becomes a part of the equation. A lot of guys are like, man, I like only being on a certain level because at least I know why people are around. When you reach a certain level, people are around you for other reasons. And that's true. So what? What's the alternative? Are you going to decide to be unsuccessful? Like it or not, guys. Value, money, success solves other issues. So you have to, in my opinion, for, for me and the guys, my clients, when especially when I'm doing um, opposition research when I was in PR, I just say make a decision. Know the kind of people you want to deal with. And it, if at best you can meet people from your same social circle and date somebody it is always wise as a man to never, ever interact with somebody that you would not be OK with it going public. Because it can happen. Whatever you do, understand. And my own personal code is this, man, treat people with respect. Treat people with respect and don't be trying to dog folk out because I mean, what do you want? I, yeah, I dated him and it was he was weak in the bed. Da, 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 da. Be like, yeah, okay, she's right. I, I was weak in the bed. All that, okay, you, you can't do anything about that. You can sign, you can get non disclosures and all this, all that. At the end of the day, guys, this is what this whole equally yoked thing. I say, guys, you should deal with somebody who has just as much to lose as you. That's my goal. Deal with somebody who has just as much to lose as you. So dating in Atlanta is just another layer on top of that. But after the, but after you do the STD thing, I do have to mention this too. With the amount of colored, colorful hair, the tattoos, the extravagant makeup, I'm not going to lie, man. It took me a few, uh, a couple, three weeks to get kind of adjusted to how many guys down here that were born men who are now women. 
The crying game is real. I wear glasses, prescription. And oftentimes my sunglasses are not prescription. So um, I don't see somebody across the spot with my, my, my sunglasses on. I, before I step to anybody, I got to get within glasses. Because down here, there are born males that are now female or female looking. And there are, and, and I will say this, there are plenty of those down around these spaces who don't do not mind uh catfishing you. Hell, they got videos on YouTube with dudes talking about non-disclosure. Can you imagine what I'm talking about? Can you imagine what would happen if you if you stepped to somebody and you got young bucked? Non-disclosure, man, that's a good way to end up slipping with the fishes, man. No, I'm not going to have the mafia after me. No. See, let's talk about this whole gay thing too, man. Look here, man. You cannot be me and be a man in my line of work in fashion and fragrance and have an issue with the LGBT community. It's dominated by uh, alternative lifestyle. Fine. That's business. Cool. I love Tom Ford's work. Tom Ford is a homosexual man. But if you, but I don't, do you think that's going to change the fact whether or not I wear his suits? No. But you do have to carry yourself and move in a certain kind of way when you're a heterosexual man in an industry that's dominated with the LGBTQ because there are a lot of dudes that will try you. And women will tell you, do you have women who are bartenders who will try them? And and I will tell you, you cannot decide to become a high value man or a good looking guy. It's going to happen. So you need to have a response for it. You need to understand. And you can't get mad. Man, don't be doing that. Oh, man. Nah, mm -mm. Cool. Thanks. Appreciate it. You need to have lines. Like, let's say somebody who's a colleague who's happened to be in the LGBT community. All right, cool. Everything needs to be between the hours of eight and five and in a group. And I learned this when I was uh, in New York City. I actually had a colleague who was homosexual. Now, when you're a salesperson, it's not uncommon to do ride alongs with each other. And, you know, you guys are you know going to a certain area or district of town and you're cold calling and selling together and you grabbing lunch with coworkers, but you you got to factor that in. And I remember one time I was in my office and the Phantom Menace was coming out. And a guy knocked on my office and said, hey man, I know you're a Star Wars fan. Said, yep. He's like, ah, I scored two tickets to the Phantom Menace. The nine or eight o'clock showing. You want to roll? Now see, if that were Jedi Mac or Obsidian, I'd have been like, hell yeah. But it wasn't. It was him. And I had to say, hey man, have a seat. You are you, I am me, and I'm cool with that. But I think we need to have an understanding. There are certain things you and I will never, ever do. One is go somewhere where it can be perceived as you and I on a date, i.e. the movies. No, fam. Cannot happen. Just like, and so what about after hours in our dinner meetings? I'm like, there's always, there would always have to be a client or somebody. I was like, no, we would do that during the day. I was like, you can never be perceived as being in a date-like scenario. That would be bad form on your part. And he was a big gym head. He was like, I was like, we could never work out together. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm not going to have you spotting me, man. I'm down over the bench and you lowering it down. And you're, I, no. And he have to he start cracking. He's like, man, I never thought about it like that. I was like, of course you haven't. Because you're, cause you're you. But for me being me, No. 
Gotta have parameters, man. You got to. But I'm also tell you something too. If you date really hot chicks, especially models and actors and actresses, oh, this may need to go to Patreon, huh? Well, yeah, you just gotta have your you gotta have your lines, man. You gotta have your lines and. Sometimes, and they're just things you cannot do. Cannot do, you cannot do, you should not do, should not want to do. Um, and why is that a problem in, in Atlanta? Uh, the, the, there's, a, there's a large amount of African-American uh, homosexual men here. Uh, I'm even shocked at how prevalent it is. Um, all right, you just keep it moving. Um, I'm also shocked at how many, how often people walk around smelling like that sticky, icky, icky. If you got a, you can get a contact high walking around in Lennox or Phipps. It's a different way of living, man. It's like Miami, Hollywood, and New York City. Um, it's just crazy. And as a man. You better have a strategy for how you attack this, how you move here, because you can't make any mistakes, cannot make any mistakes, cannot. And you better err on the side of caution. Better err on the side of caution, because especially in the alternative lifestyle, some of them folks love exposing people. And i actually overheard in these tea places where some of these folks would actually try to get somebody with a profile kind of caught up to extort them for money nah 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 I'll pass this is another and why is this important this is why you tend to find high value men who tend to be married or in long term relationships because when you have a profile, a public image, a public brand, you risk it all every time you interact with a new person romantically. Think about what I'm saying. You could you could have spent your um who was that? How many times have you heard your favorite actor, actress, singer, whatever? And then you find out, oh, they were they were caught, you know, uh, in the you know, George Michael, Teddy Pendergrass, Eddie Murphy. The list goes on. You don't need those problems in your life. Extortion is a high value crime. That's right. That's right. People target, and and some of the best of them target new money. New money is, I mean, Cardi B went viral for talking about how they used to set dudes up, right? She would, what did she go viral for? Saying that she would drop, some, spike somebody something and then end, end up bringing in somebody from an alternative lifestyle. And that stuff happens. But not with your boy. Not going to happen right there. So anyway, we just went completely off the rails. I don't know how that got here. Okay, T. Curry, you asked that question. So I right, be careful out there, God. You ain't you ain't said nothing but a word to me. You ain't said nothing but a word to me. Careful is my shit. I'm not gonna let no sir, not gonna happen. Anyway, I gotta get up out of here now. I gotta grab yeah, it's almost 1 30. It's been late. All right, thank you, everybody. Till next time. Peace. We are gone. Get up out. Low down dirty wop. Y'all just gonna ham in the chat room with this wop. Success comes with a cost.
Join me on IG. Join me on IG for videos you will only see in the frat room. Behind the scenes, oftentimes dripping and running through Atlanta. This is going to be a great fall. When the, when the videos are up, they're up. When they're gone, they're gone. Support the movement on Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons for making this thing possible. Awesome. Lord have mercy. Vacation ends on Sunday. We're back to work on Monday. The shows will continue to go on, but I'm back to work in the office and I got a lot of stuff to catch up on. Thanks to the patrons. Thanks to the folks in the... Oh, hold on. That guy popped up. Thanks to the patrons. There it is. Patreon. EvanRSamuels.com All right, here we go. Next. Then your show ideas. The info at BuyKevinSamuels.com Or go to buykevinsamuels.com to book you and go to the scheduling tab scheduling tab and book your service virtual consultation personal advice whatever it is you want to do go there and pick your date and time now as far as the show ideas appreciate it but try to keep it shorter and I appreciate all the love and stuff but sending me a text wall on the email I'm not going to read that respect my inbox too much to read I'm a PhD. 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 Need to, we need that. Re-